Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. <clears throat> I'm Nate Bargetsy. Brian Bates, Aaron Weber here. Uh, uh, welcome. I don't, I don't know if this is going to start. Yeah, because we're, we're pre-recording this one for a future when your baby's here. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You think that'll be the next time we need it? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to hold on to it till. I hope for Imagine your baby just sees, <laughs> just sees you sitting at the end of this table. Like, it just... I just imagine your baby's 30 now and just going back and looking at this and be like, where's your dad? And then just as you, hello, folks. Well, short sleeves. I already have jokes about yeah. as soon as she comes out of the womb and sees me, she's yeah. going to be doing that. Yeah. I'm going to get lost in the parking garage, yeah. leaving the hospital. Yeah. But, uh, well, this shirt, Kevin, yes. our friend Kevin makes this shirt. I don't think I've ever worn it on the show. That shirt's unbelievable, dude. I haven't no, seen that. it's a good that. shirt. But to your point, I did when Ruth had the high blood pressure. We had to go to the ER. I was wearing this shirt, and they're checking us in. And I see the woman just kind of, yeah. And I realize I'm wearing a shirt of myself. Yeah, she's like, oh god, yeah, this guy's gonna be. Hello, she talks talking to you like that. (laughs) Hi. She's like, put two masks on, please. How are you doing? You made it. Uh, you live on your own now. <laughs> yeah, I'm on now. (laughs) He goes, that's good, Kramer. (laughs) Yeah, it's Kramer. You live right here. What is it? You live on? Yeah, live on my own now. Right? <laughs> I think that's the tops. I think that's the tops. <laughs> yeah, You're not doing that too bad for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got Nate Land Podcast. Yeah. Kevin does a great job. Oh, yeah. Well, Kevin's great. Yeah, he's the best. Uh, Kevin Best. Uh, but they, yeah, that is funny. Like you are, that's what they, you're, the, you're Kramer of that, that episode. <laughs> you're just the top. They think I'm special. Mel Torme. <laughs> yeah. And you would be going to see Mel Torme. I don't think I knew who Mel Torme was. And I don't think I really even do now. Outside of that ep- Seinfeld, I'd heard of him. I think he's like, was he like a Vegas guy? I guess so. It was like a, I guess I don't know. I mean, I think he was pretty well known, but it was back forties and fifties yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sitting Mel- next to Mel related Torme? to Marissa Torme, different spelling. I know. I, I like. Sure. It's a great name, Mel Torme. I'm sure it's like the you, Velvet it's, Fog. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're going to know who he is. You would know exactly who he is and all that stuff, but. I mean, I think that's what he was <clears throat> called, right? I think that's what Seinfeld did good, where they would just, they would give you someone like that. Maybe everybody knows Mel Torme, but they give you something like that, that you're like, I guess I should know him. And then yeah. the name is so like, yeah, uh, Mel Torme. Mel Torme I knew, but one that he gave that I had no idea is um, when I think Jerry's parents think he's running low on money and they call the, I think it's the Cadillac yeah. episode, and they call the club and they're like, they didn't have you listed. And he says, oh, I don't go by myself. I go by Slappy, Slappy White. White. Slap, do you know who that is? Uh, I don't know. He's a veteran Chitlin Circuit comedian, and oh. he traveled with Red Fox, and he was on uh, Sanford and Son. And when Red Fox finally made it on Sanford and Son, he booked all his former friends had never done anything uh, and he was one of them. Oh, wow. All those guys were comedians. The woman who played Aunt Esther, she was a comedian on what they called the Chitlin circuit. Yeah. And he just brought all his friends along. Oh, that's cool. He would tell them, find a spot in the show for this guy. Yeah. And then they would just have to do it. Yeah. But so funny that Jerry, Slappy White, is Slappy such White. a very unique <laughs> reference. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was interesting. No, yeah. that is super interesting yeah. for sure. Yeah, it is. You know why I know Slappy White? Jeff Ross mentions them in a joke. If you ever watch the roast of Emmett Smith online, Jeff Ross, he's talking about how he's the only white guy there, and he says, we got everybody but Slappy White in here. <laughs> and that's the only thing I've ever heard that name in until you just described it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a good episode. I was gonna be, we're rolling in. It just got obscure. We go from Seinfeld, to, it just kept getting more obscure. The roast like, of Emmett Smith. You ever see the roast of Emmett Smith? You're like, I don't, I mean, maybe. It's I a guess. great roast, dude. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's a great roast. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Because Jeff Ross says, every comic up here dreamed of being a Dallas Cowboy one day, but the only one who even came close was Monique. Yeah. <laughs> She's up there, and it's just the place yeah. he rubs, yeah. dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jeff Ross is unreal. Uh, I'm excited to have been introduced to Athletic Greens recently. Uh, life is busy, and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens make it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop. Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. 
Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That is athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Also, uh, hello, f- uh, hello, folks, to our friends at Hel- Helix Sleep. You all right? Yeah, sorry. Good, good, good. <laughs> nervous? Are you nervous about buying a mattress online? <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Helix Sleep is over 12,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Their two-minute sleep squiz, squiz, their two-minute sleep quiz, should be a squiz because it's Helix Matrix. Helix Matrix. Their two-minute sleep quiz matches you with the mattress that is a perfect fit. Plus, you have 100 nights to try it out risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Nate. Big thank you to our new sponsor, Allbirds. When you get my age, a big part of shoe putting on is tying them. You don't want to do it. With Allbirds, you can just slip them on. I love it. Get your Allbirds wool dasher mizzle today at allbirds.com. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Nayland is brought to you by Indeed. Help, Indeed will help you see your top talents abilities faster with 135 assessment tests. And with Indeed, you only pay for applications that meet your job's must-have requirements. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer valid through March 31st. And upstart. What would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? Would you move to a new city, start a family? Through Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly with a personal loan so you can tackle your next big financial goal. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. Uh, Paul Antonio, they're going to write in the comments. Uh, <laughs> Been rewatching the old episodes, and I have to say there has been zero character to development on the part of any of our three hosts <laughs> over the course of the last year and a half, except maybe in our perspective of Aaron and his fall from grace as a supposed secret genius. Commenters on early episodes liked saying things like, hope you guys never change, and you're definitely held up your end of the bargain. <laughs> good luck. Good luck, Kim Pace, in 2022. I, but you not being a secret genius has been... That's earth shattering for sure. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in Notre Dame. He's got all this kind of stuff, and yeah, just the dumbest of all. A letdown. Yeah, you're only as smart as the company you keep. Honestly, that's true. You know, yeah. So you would be better if you were like on a science podcast, and y'all, y'all, y'all be like saying stuff. I'd be the dumb guy on a science podcast yeah. for sure. But we bring you down is what you're saying. No, I'm saying we're meeting in the middle somewhere. Mm-hmm. Aren't and you an average of the five people you're most around? I've never heard that. What is that from? I think it's Tony Robbins. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> he said you're an average of the... Or something like, yeah, the but the five people you're closest to is how you're going to act. Okay. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be like, you, it's kind of yourself. Mm-hmm. I guess that's who you'd want to hang out. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why your friends are always going to be kind of like, everybody's friends you look alike. Kind of like you end up just being around people that are you. Yeah. But I hope if if I've gotten dumber, I hope I'm getting funnier. I would take that trade any day of the week. Mm, one day. And <laughs> there's I don't know. <laughs> he shot that down so quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll see. Well, yeah. yeah. I think so. Eventually. Ryan Zuber. I just said too, like people hang out the only there. I'm not trying to describe racism. <laughs> I go, that's the motor line with the sound. I go, yes, yeah, so that's why we all just hang out with our own kind. To look like um, us. To look like us. And be like, yeah, that's why I think more people should be hanging out with just the, each other. And they go, I don't know. Stick to your own. Yeah. I mean, if you take anything from this podcast, it's stick to your own. You know? They land podcasts. Ryan Zuber, right up after that. Tonight, just before sending my third grade son, Cy, to bed. A Planet Fitness commercial was playing on TV. He said, if Aaron ever went inside, he could have been in the commercial. <laughs> I love the show references my kids randomly throw out. Thanks for giving my whole family some laughs to look forward to weekly. That's very cool. Yeah. We got a new one. Got a new one. Racism. Yeah. Let's <laughs> do that one. Don't say that one at school. Uh, Jace Hupperick. J-A-C Hooperick. Hooperike. H-U-P-P-E-R-I-C-H. I am 12 years old. 
and I listen to your podcast all the time. My mom says I should read more instead of listening to your podcast at night, but it helps me go to sleep. <laughs> I want to hear Nate try to pronounce this word. Hippopotamosaurophobia. Try to guess what it means. Hip, 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 you give up towards the, the yeah. thir- three quarters in, you kind of just go, let's get through it. And then I hit the phobia. It looks like somebody just jammed their fingers on a keyboard. Yeah. It doesn't it, look, it, it actually means something. It does look like, and it's like scared very of, scared of hippos. Scared of something. No, it's That's very funny. Guess. Yeah. It's a scare. It's a fear of long words. Oh. <laughs> That's what yeah, it is. It's kind of a funny. mean trick they did. Mm. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Hippopotamon lephobia. How would, what kind of job would you have to be like, if you're like, I got to say this word more than you realize? Like, it, what would it, like, well, I mean, like if a you're a psychologist like, or something, I guess. Yeah, that's like, you know, it's like. Yeah, but. Somebody, I guess, realized there wasn't a word to describe the fear of long words, mm-hmm. and they just to be funny said, "This make a really long word." Yeah, uh-huh. I want to know who that is. Like, who gets to come up with that? Charlie and, Chaplin and <laughs> Mel Torme. <laughs> Mel Torme, <laughs> Miriam or Webster, maybe I don't know. Uh, could be Shakespeare. He did a bunch of stuff. Yep, he did. He did do a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Daniel Alt. Would y'all ever consider doing the podcast while playing a round of golf? Uh, I mean, I would. I don't think you'd want to listen to it. <laughs> Be a long episode. I don't think. I, I My buddy Doug, who did our music at the top, we are talked about doing like a golf thing. The hard part is you're not going to care. I think the audience, you're not, you think you're going to, you think you'd want it. Some people I'm saying might want it, but that a number of people are very limited. I think it would have to be like the Krispy Kreme challenge really edited it down. Yeah. Like the Krispy Kreme challenge is like, that's why we did it the way we did. It, it was on top. It was like a bonus thing. Yeah. Cause then you don't feel bad being like, well, this is an extra thing. Yeah. So if you don't, if this is not your thing, then it's not, then what it, we're doing it, we're not trying to trick you into not doing a real episode. So it could be something like that. You know, it'd be video heavy though. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I was I, like, I was saying when I did my golf podcast, if I ever do one. You shot a video once out on the course. Eric Andersling. Air- Wait. The one in Missouri we're at? Uh, oh, yeah. Did that ever air? Yeah. That one was, no. Uh, was I don't think so. Mike Lavin yeah, and yeah, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Nick got drunk. <laughs> uh, that, talking about playing golf. <laughs> Tiger, War- Tiger Woods course in uh in uh, uh, Branson, yeah, in the where you go, let's go play with him out there. It's a who, long one. Who me? Yeah, Are that's you when y'all played. We played. That's yeah. when y'all played thirty six that day, right? No, 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 we played. Okay, uh, I remember you were wiped out one of those days. Bro. Yeah, yeah, that was like it's like it's Tiger Woods course, but that was one that you're like, all right, we gotta gotta pick the ball up. I missed. You remember that part three? I, yeah. Missed a short putt for birdie. Yeah. Yeah. Hit a, a, a one almost hole in one. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. But then. How'd the rest of it go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would have, you said you can go to the airport right now, I'd go, I'll take it. <laughs> Ryan Lynch, what's the longest set any of you has ever performed? Have you ever done two hours of material? Uh, I still think the longest I've maybe done is at 115 or something. And I almost think I did it maybe an hour 20, like and I did it, it was in a real bad situation. I think I've ever, ever talked about it. Like the I did a show in uh Maine, uh, and it was a lock-in. And so they it's you know, like I don't some people don't know what lock-in is, but it's like so instead of like prom, so especially like smaller towns, so they don't go out and drink and drive and blah blah, whatever, mm-hmm. they they just rent it out like a place that had bumper boats and uh mini golf and all this and so then the kids just stay there all night mm-hmm. and uh so i was a comic and so they hired me to perform i performed in one of the rooms and i would say it would take me i remember going alone to this gig and like i was said that when i was performing in the room i was performing it would take you a minute to find me 
because people are just walking around you. Like, it's not like you have a, you're just in a corner. Yeah. So there's a, like, kind of a runway in the middle where everybody's walking. Yeah. And then there's some people kind of sitting behind watching. But I mean, if you walked in, you would be like, where's the comedian? Yeah. And you would, you'd have to find me. And I think I talked for an hour and 20 something minutes just because the K, the pure chaos right. alone was, you're like, you're not doing material. You, you know, you try and then you're just like, you end up like talking to people. Kids are like grabbing the microphone. Like, I mean, it's just not good. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, that's still to this day probably the longest. Was set. that a high school? It was for a high school. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it was like a, a wreck. I How mean, long have you been doing that sounds college? sounds awful, man. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, six years or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, not long, you know, it's like where you don't know how to handle that. But I mean, then you're driving to Maine. I remember driving to Maine. That's where they, for that night, they're like, a moose could just be in the middle of the road. You're going to hit it, just falls on you, and you die. <laughs> like, it was just all the, all the stuff, you know, that you're scared of. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is going to be. But I always remember that. And that was the longest I ever did. I've done an hour, you know, I, I hit, I've hit 70 probably, but I don't, I don't ever do. Two hours. Two I mean, hours. I would like to do more. I want to eventually, I hope to, I don't, it's not going to be right. I, like I said, I do an hour. I would like to do, uh, I would like to be, you know, eventually up to, you know, in a couple of years, be doing like 75, 80. You can do like, a one man show, 90 minutes. You're going to do that. I, uh, <clears throat> if I could ever do it, I could see wanting to do it. I mean, I do, I like bringing people, comics on the road and yeah. you having people with you. But, uh, but I I could see wanting to do. I think it's like you know you gotta want it's a it's a it's a delicate amount of time because you gotta realize your whole night is this kind of thing. So you need to be the show an hour and a half show is a good usually a good amount of show. So an hour and a half hour forty five somewhere hour and a half to two is probably you know give or take that should be almost your whole experience of being in the place. Mm-hmm. I think, and then you watch the show and it's funny and then you you know. And then you just you hit hard and you get out. But two hours, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't. I know a lot of comics. That do. I did my longest set ever this weekend. Oh, really? I did like I did like fifty six minutes. Oh, yeah. That's as long as I'd ever done. Yeah. And I told them they wanted an hour, and I told them before I started, I was like, you know, it might be best if it's going to be closer to forty five. Just a heads yeah. up. But I was having fun. I just kept yeah. going. It feels pretty good to get off. And I looked at my watch. I was like, oh my God, dude. Oh, it's I haven't been on better. that long. Yeah. And I never really felt like I was reaching for stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty good feeling. Yeah. You got to slow down. You ever feel like you're like up there and you're like, well, I got to slow this down. I'm oh yeah. Done. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt at the beginning. And then your, your mind will just be like, I don't know if I know any joke ever mm-hmm. that I've ever told. <laughs> and then you're just stuck. It's, uh, you know, you have all these old jokes, but you're like, I don't know if I could do it's, you know, it's hard. It's like when you get stuff really tight in the way it should be on stage, I'm a big, you shouldn't have stuff loose. It should be able to be tight. If you can't tighten it, I think it's, I don't know, unless it's not tight for a reason. Like if you're, if you're not tight for, uh, you know, cause you're like setting up a bigger thing later. Like, so, you know, you could have a joke. I remember having one joke that would be kind of not, it wouldn't be funny, but I, the setup needed to be a couple minutes long. Just wouldn't be funny. And then the Davy story about the gay street or whatever, like that one mm-hmm. was like the front is just kind of setting it up. Doesn't need to be really funny. I could get a couple chuckles. Maybe you're kind of, I don't need just enough to know you're interested in listening. And then the payoff is boom, 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 boom. Right. So it's like, but I was, the longer you get from a laugh, the bigger the laugh has to be. So if you stay somewhat near the laughs, you can always, and you can build momentum off, like, you know, and then like it sets them off. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty crazy. We were talking, we were talking about down there, like this weekend I felt it was, uh, just doing it 19 years. It's like, it's, it's, I love it. Like it's talking about the motivation to doing comedy, like and everything. Like you got to get excited again. You got to, you got all this kind of stuff. Like we were talking, uh, you know, saying like your, your Seinfeld always say if you if he could go back to the time when no one knew him, it's like there was nothing funner than that to make the people laugh that didn't know you. And I can still go a lot of places where people wouldn't know me, but it's like when they come see you now, they do know you. But then it's the excitement of going well. They have these expectations of you. So can I be better than the expectations? Can I exceed those? Can I exceed 
their yeah. expectations. And so like there is like you got to have some kind of challenge or you don't care. And if for me, if I don't have that kind of like I'm trying to win you over in some way, then you could be like, what do I, I don't what do I care? Yeah. It's, and that's where I think people can get where stuff becomes a paycheck and you're going, I don't care. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I put on, you're talented enough to put on a whatever show and who cares and whatever. But you got to, that's where you got to be aware of that. <clears throat> you got to be aware to make sure that doesn't go away. And like, so you got to find the thing that'd be like, when you go on the road and you keep doing these cities and it's every night and there's times you don't, you're like, I don't even know where I was. I don't know where I am. Like, I don't, you're just, you're just hitting, but you got to be like, but it's, it's, it's about the stage. It's about, I mean, that's the whole point. Live performance is such a beautiful kind of thing that's yeah. that seems like it's going away. Like it's like so now it's like you go. I get to. It, it's almost. Like I get to go up and try to show them. Can I be better than what they expected me to be? Yeah. And then that's the same feeling I had before when I first started. And you was like, Can I? Like if you're a new comic, just be like, Can I? I can't wait to murder in front of these people. If you have that kind of excitement it's that's the excitement you always need yeah it's not about i don't it, the joke's got to work to murder but it's like sometimes i don't know if you can get too bogged down it's like it's still a performance go murder go try to be like can i make them laugh how hard can i make these people laugh it's it's that's the that's the excitement i remember having that Everybody did that. We started with, but it was like that was a big like. It's the the old running thing of every comic thinks if a crowd's bad and everybody goes, I'll get them. We all yeah. think that. We all think, well, I know how to. Uh-huh. Y'all don't know what you're doing. I'll get them. Yeah. And sometimes the crowds, you're like, yeah, no one's getting them. They're just that bad. Yeah. But if you don't have the attitude of like, well, I could probably get them. Then I, then that's you need to have that attitude. Not saying you say it. Not saying you you're not obnoxious about it. Yeah. But in your mind, you should go. I'll get them. It's a little bit of, I think of it as like calibrated delusion a little bit. Yeah. Where you have no evidence or any reason to think that you are going to do better, but you're like, it's in there. Yeah. I'm going to do it. But, I, but I'll but i do it. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll figure it out. This is what I'm good at. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. I mean, I, I just, yeah, doing stand-up is like doing it over this long time. It's just so fun to see how, you know, and it's, I still don't think I know what I'm doing. Well, was, But that's what's crazy. I look at that comedy stage back there it's the 15 year anniversary just passed of you doing that yeah. and I just 15 years this week I took my first stand up comedy class oh wow. wow so been doing it a while now that's pretty cool yeah. man uh, yeah it takes people longer than other uh, <laughs> yes it does <laughs> no I'm joking it I'm does I'm joking. that was me. <laughs> but I had to do it you know it was right there yeah. it, was getting, uh, it was getting too serious it was getting too serious yeah. but it is like yeah, it's 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 just interesting. But you've been able to see a difference of you, like oh, it's yeah. like crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. We always talk about like too, like would be you, you the way you tell jokes at the beginning, like they'd be too downer, like people like feel bad for mm-hmm. you, like where you got to learn how to do that. Like at the beginning was some of that would happen when we first went on the road together. You could see you could go up there and it's like almost like you can be too sad. Mm-hmm. Same. I used to have the wife stuff that I was like I've talked about where people were like, well, you, it sounds like you hate her, mm-hmm. and then you're like, well, I'm not. That's not the point of this. Mm-hmm. So I need to figure out how to get that across. Because if you can get it across that there's love behind it, right? Then I can talk about anything. Yeah. And if you can make it in front of yourself and you can get across like that, me being dumb, I have to be careful to be. I can't be so dumb that you're going to go like you feel sad. Mm-hmm. You got to be dumb enough, but like people still are like, no, nah, I, yeah, I get it. Like you just didn't, you know, you didn't think when you did. Yeah, you know, a bit and, of an airhead. You know. Yeah, it's yeah. like a mix of that. But there is, you know, it's like uh, this podcast. Know. On the other hand. Wide open. <laughs> Wide open. Well, you hear it. I don't have a, a filter. It's not protected. Yeah, yeah. It's real time. It's real time. So it's like, yeah, I try not to. I don't want people to know as much, which I got a joke about that now. But it's, yeah, you try not to now. But yeah, now you say something, and you're like, people are like, ooh. You're like, I don't know. Talk about the universe. And they're like, good <laughs> night, man. <laughs> they're like, I can't handle this. And I'm like, I didn't know people went to this much school. Uh, Kevin Robreski. Rob Robleski. I bet Wobleski or Rob. I bet it's Robleski. W R. I'm guessing Robleski. Robleski. That's my guess. My wife is sick and tired of me saying nightmare. She recently found out where I acquired the habit, but she did buy me 
uh, shoot about any tickets to the Houston show February 12th. I don't think I read that sentence even remotely right. No. Uh, I read it. I mean, it would, if you could see it <laughs> typed out, it's, I, it's, my wife is sick and tired of me saying nightmare. She recently found out where I acquired this habit. But she still, but she did buy me tickets to the Houston show February twelfth. Am I is I'm not reading it the That's way. That's way better. You were hung up on Robleski still. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. You got it right that time. Basically, even though his wife found out, it was a nightmare from you. She still was nice enough to buy him tickets to yeah. see you. Yeah, yeah. You should have heard what he was saying before nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> he's saying some awful stuff. J.R. Baker, hmm. Nate Dog, <laughs> a. <laughs> uh, Nate Dog. I used to call it Nate Dog in high school. I was always called Nate Dog. It was so much that I thought I would never. I was like, I don't know if I ever get my name back. Yeah, because it was only called Nate. When Dog. did that? When did that go away? Uh, when he went away, and <laughs> there <laughs> did he die? Who? Nate Dog. Oh, you were probably too old for it. I don't, but he was yeah. a rapper in the nineties. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking <laughs> about? I thought you just said you're Nate Dog. He died in two thousand eleven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Nate Dog was a. Uh, yeah, famous. But so everybody, Nate Dog, everybody knew that. So I got called Nate Dog. Uh, and so you never heard of Nate Dog? I have, but I didn't know it was a rapper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you already even, <laughs> you had a real job when he got years active, 1990, 2008, Channel 5. Yeah. You're doing the news. <laughs> Nate Dog, A Dub, and Bisquick. I've been preaching for 25-ish years, and I like to think I'm pretty entertaining and funny. Do you think those skills could translate at all to stand-up comedy, or do you think it's apples and oranges? I know you all have plenty of church experiences, so I thought you all might be able to weigh in. Uh, I don't think you got a chance, JR. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> you would have a chance. You just, it's, gotta, it's the tightness is what people – the tightness is, is, I think, something people don't realize. You listen to, listen to when someone tells a story. Mm -hmm. When you have a regular person, you have one of your buddies telling you a story, really think about the story they're telling you and go like, how much is necessary of this story? And you can start, no I, I mean, I notice it a lot now, but it'd be curious if you're listening to this to like, don't say anything. Just like if someone goes, I got a story for you, just be in your head, be like, all right, let me, let me see. Yeah. Because it's, I think you would notice like, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 it's the same thing. It's repeated. It's something that should be a sentence. It shouldn't be a whole story. A lot of times, a story is. I think when someone tells it, it's uh, it's they take like the, the the funny thing will be like your squirrels in your car or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's the that's the whole the whole point of you even wanting to tell a story. Yeah. But then you will say, so two weeks ago I parked the car and mm -hmm. then, now you're walking me through like all of it. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, dude. And then by the time you get to the squirrels, I don't know if I even care. <laughs> and so it's like you got to be like, well what's the when you think of a story, like what's the what's the main thing I want to get to and what's the fastest way for me to get to it? Yeah. How much do I really need? Do I need to tell you that I parked the car two weeks ago and I didn't know? Is it, you know, I don't know the wires, but we've had trouble with our car. You know, it's like, how do you, you know, how do you tell it? But I mean, if he's a if he's a pastor and he, for 25 years, I mean, he, yeah, he talks, he knows how to make stuff where people are listening. He knows Keep how to stand on attention. stage, yeah. hold a mic. Yeah. It's just a different thing. Yeah, stand I'm impressed up. that every they can do that every week. It's a totally different yeah. message. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. They so I mean, he's a he's a talker. You got to be able to be a talker, and uh, I yeah. I mean, you could do it. I mean, it would just be it's it's the same way. Like I was thinking, if I have to give, I don't really ever have to do it. But like people want to do stand up. But if I had to give a speech or something, could I do it? I mean, I guess if I prepared it, you know. Yeah, you could. you know how to talk. I mean, this guy could. They, he could get up and talk and do it. I don't. I. I. I it's. It's somewhat. The skill set is somewhat the same. Mm -hmm. It would be if you can get laughs. You got to realize though, like when you're. I would say the only thing would be: Are your laughs coming from? You're at doing this in a place where people are not expecting laughs. Those laughs could be easier than if you go in, in a comedy room. I expect everybody to be really funny. Mm -hmm. So, are your jokes going to be? as fun like that's what i would be conscious of to be like all right like yeah get laughs at church well i'm the only one being funny at church mm -hmm. but if i go to a, a zanies yeah well now the crowd's like well everybody's supposed to be really funny maybe the jokes are, you know you, i would i'm not saying that 
he's one way or the other, but I would say I would at least think about that. The expectations like, are totally different. Yeah, expectations are different. So I would think like, all right, what what's funny in church? How much do I have that? How much can I tighten up? You know, but if a guy's funny, I mean, he's a guy can be. Now, funny. Have you ever heard? This is one of my favorite clips ever. I I had never heard of the guy outside of this clip, but apparently he's uh, he's big. Uh, John Piper is his name. He's speaking to a group of Christian counselors at some conference. Yeah. And my understanding of the story is: Have you heard of this before? It's uh, he got switched with a comedian at the last second. Yeah. So he goes out there, and the crowd thinks he's a comedian. Yeah. And he's a very serious, intense guy. Yeah. And he's given this speech, and he unbeknownst to him he doesn't understand why he's like murdering yeah. at this conference <laughs> yeah and he keeps getting laughs and then he, he keeps being like guys i don't know why this is a very serious thing and yeah. that gets a huge <laughs> laugh and he just can't stop killing at this That's thing funny just the context was uh the context all can you up. Put, can it, does it show like a highlight of it or yeah it's a longer i can kind of fast forward yeah. a little bit in here and you'll get an idea of the kind of laughs he's getting yeah but uh he just cannot understand why he's killing so hard all the time namely god knows totally all the time whether any speaker is a fraud or a hypocrite so you may as well know as well if he knows <laughs> you hear the crowd laugh <laughs> it's a wake-up call to speak to people like you i've never done anything like this before a wake-up call to the realities of uh, pretense <laughs> in my life suspecting that any Right here. Any attempt at uh, schmoozing would be known right away. <laughs> so yes. I thought I would spare you the analysis and just go ahead and tell you up front that um, I'm a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm a man who, um, to be more specific, must. Crucify. He goes on. It's a very serious talk that yeah. he's given. That's and it's so great, killing, man. That's so great. <laughs> That's. So I funny. mean, it's like, yeah, we need to, we're we're sending. To, I need to watch the whole thing. It's five minutes long, so yeah. it's like I don't want to make y'all. Uh, but God, that's so good, and because it's like no one has any idea. I mean, that's just great. And you can understand if you go into it thinking this guy's going to be funny. He kind of had the timing of I kind of mm -hmm. get it. You know, well, that, that's probably the answer to this is going like it's the context of like, yeah, that guy actually might do good because in the context they think it's it's going to be whatever. So they think, yeah, if you think this guy, you're like, I guess this is the character he's doing of just being, you know, like you're like, all right, I guess he's just doing this. I'm a sinner. This, I'm a laughs. sinner. Just big. <laughs> yeah. He goes, all right. You can tell too. You can tell when someone's confused, like on state, like when they. It's like when they talk a little slower, like he knows how to get through the speech, mm. but the, how it's slow, he's going like, something's not, like something's not there. He's like registering. He's going, why? He's like, what is, you know, that's where he's got to think, is my zipper down? Is my, <laughs> yeah. you know, is someone behind me? Like, I mean, you know, that's where, I, I've sometimes you get a laugh, you can get a laugh so hard on stage sometimes that I, we always talk about like your zipper being down, but I've thought, did someone walk out behind me and like is doing something? And sometimes like a joke just hits that hard. You're like, you kind of like, I'll turn sideways. You're like, let me make sure no one's like, someone's not backstage. They're going like <laughs> yeah, waving. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I thought it was me. You know, uh, that's funny. Uh, Luke Ger, uh, Wajardo, J Wajardo. What's a G? G, U-A-J. Gu Guardo. Gu Guajardo. Guajardo. Yeah. Guajardo, Luke Guajardo. I think that's how you should go by. I think everybody, everybody would come up to you and go, uh, Luke, they go, Guajardo? You go, no, Guajardo. You go, oh. <laughs> so like you say, yeah, 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 you're the only one that does it. The, the Guajardo family could be like, we're eh, we're not wasting everybody's time. You have to get, we're, what you see is what you get in the Guajardo family, <laughs> you know? Because I started listening to this podcast about two or three months ago when I realized this was the last episode. I felt so lost and didn't know what to do. I then thought about Aaron Land and said to myself, sadly, okay, I'll listen to that for a while. <laughs> that while I wait for the next episode is Nate Land. I was surprisingly disappointed when I found out that Aaron Land was not real. I looked for it for about an hour and then realized that maybe it was a joke. I'm probably more gullible than Mick. That's Little great. did you know, Luke, you've been listening to it for a while. Yeah. 
We'll it's still, you just got through Aaronland just as quick. Piece by piece. Well, go check out Batesville in your view. <laughs> yeah, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Rogers. My dad used to work at the DuPont plant back in the day, and I decided to show him Tennessee Kid, being that he's from Knoxville. When Nate's Earth Day joke came on and he mentioned the plant, we paused the special and did the math to find out that he was inside the plant when Nate was outside planting a tree. It truly is a small world. Love the podcast, y'all. How fun is that? That's awesome. Look at that. That's crazy. I like that. That is funny. Uh, you can ask him, too. We also uh, uh, we got to look at Jeff Gordon's car. Once. That day? No, no, I don't know if it was that day. Maybe it was another day. <laughs> oh, because he was sponsored by DuPont. Yeah. And but I, for some reason, I thought he was there. But maybe it was just <laughs> his car. I was little. But... Uh, I remember his car. I mean, this was, you know, when Jeff Gordon was. Uh, About as big as it gets. Yeah. They yeah. do type in Old Hickory DuPont plant next to his. Yeah. And then see if it, maybe there's a picture. And then you see me there. <laughs> see you there in the car? Yeah. <laughs> that would be there pretty impressive. Didn't really change but, much. No, yeah. No. He wasn't there. This is it right here, man. Uh, no, nah, he was like out. I kind of remember it out, you know, but maybe it was just the car. Maybe the car was there and he wasn't there. Yeah. I need to ask him. Jeff, let me ask you something. Did you ever go, <laughs> Jeff Gordon, if you listen to this, did you ever go to the old Hickory DuPont plant and drive your car there? Uh, Master Craftster. Master Craftster. We've had. That's fun. Uh, have we had Master Craftster? I feel like we have. I love the funny, story, the funny stories of things that happen at your shows. I was in a Christian rock brand and played at a show at an outdoor youth festival. The next day, I had a teenager come up to me and at my regular job at Walmart and saw me and said, aren't you a singer in a band? I said, yes. And they said, yeah, I got your CD and autograph yesterday. Then he said, so you, you just work at Walmart? I said, yep. And he said, huh, and turned around. <laughs> As he was walking away, I heard his buddy chuckle and say, dude, you got the produce guy's autograph. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's entertainment. Yep. Yep. If someone wants to get into entertainment, that's 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 what it is. You're, I mean, and usually you're just lucky enough that that never happens to you. Like that, yeah. You, that's your biggest fear because you. We all have jobs, and then you, your biggest fear is to get recognized. And but it's so you're like, well, no one cares. So then that to happen is like, you're like, yeah, dude, that was every day you'd wake up and be like, I don't want that. I mean, I, you know, when I would had all my whatever jobs, I remember doing, you do Conan the next day, go to yeah. a day job. Yeah. Yeah. When I used to drive for Uber, you never know yeah. you're going to pick up. Never know you're going to pick up. It, I mean, it could be somebody to show. Did you ever get recognized or have you ever yet? Um, when you drive for Uber? You drive for Uber too? No. Oh, I'm no. just mean any no, job. In general. The when only place I've been recognized a few times outside of the context of a show yeah. is uh, the airport. Yeah. I, I met a couple people at the airport. But not at a job you had. No, not I worked office jobs, so people aren't really coming in and out. They know you're a comedian. Like the, the, the people that I work we, with? Yeah. 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 Most of them. Yeah. When you drive for yeah, you you get anybody recognize you? As the driver of the Uber? I don't think they ever did, but I always worried, or I didn't even really worry about it. Yeah. I would actually yeah, be honored. You, would, you be, would love it. I, yeah, I'd yeah. actually been honored if somebody recognized <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. But I thought about it because, yeah. I mean, I used to have a joke about it. I would start right after the show, so yeah. sometimes i turn it on, and they could be right there at the club, and I'd just take them home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you really start it that soon? Um, I would start sometimes right after... Yeah. I was already downtown, so I would just turn it yeah. on when I yeah. left. I would, though, make sure I got away from like Zanies yeah. or something. You, you ever should've. try out jokes on your passengers? No. You should have done it just for the story of, can't you still do it? Do you still have it? Like to have what? The Uber? Uh, or do you have to like read? Like, like legally, could you just go do it right now? No, or? I'd have to. I mean, it's not hard, but yeah. Yeah. you just got to sh- update your license and your uh, proof of insurance. Yeah. Okay. I could probably do it this afternoon. Yeah, as you got to do it just right after the show, after the Nayland podcast. Yeah, just go. <laughs> Can't everyone yeah. climb in. We get you get you get you go. All right, there's one Uber. <laughs> Brian, everybody, everybody wait, wait, and then now just whoever wins gets to gets to be taken home <laughs> by a, you. Right it's like home. a surprise. It's like a, <laughs> I'll do that anyway. Yeah, don't have to pay me. Yeah, <laughs> and they they just do it. Uh, yeah, uh, Bailey Johnson. My grandma used to clean out syrup bottles and fill them with cleaning supplies. When I was three, I thought I was diving into some Griffin syrup. Turns out I drink bleach. 
She had to call poison control and they told me to eat a cracker and I'd puke it up. Shortly after this incident, I accidentally burned down her kitchen by turning on a toaster oven. I feel like she should have seen that coming. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a story maybe I'd want to hear more about. <laughs> she got right to it. Yeah. Right to it. Trimmed yep. all the fat. Uh, all of it. Yeah, there's none. It's pretty good. Uh, God, Drake, why would you? Is bleach not white? Mm. Bleach is pretty, pretty. She was three. Oh. Yeah, she didn't even know colors yet. Yeah, why would you? Yeah, that's true. And you're already, you're three and you're already addicted to Griffin syrup. There's Griffin syrup. I've never heard of this brand. Did we talk oh. about this on the John Reap episode? I feel like. Yeah, he had a his, his said his was that his family would fill up old syrup bottles for yeah. water bottles. Yeah, yeah. But was it not Griffin's? Yeah. I think it was a different. Maybe, okay. I, yeah. But Bailey, <laughs> I mean, she was yeah, she was three. So, but eating syrup, I mean, it's just a wildly. The grandmother was like, I just never imagined. Yeah. Where would she keep the syrup? <laughs> I mean, just under like, the sink. <laughs> yeah, I guess under the sink. Oh, I totally misread it. It was full of yeah, bleach. Okay, okay, but it was in a Griffin syrup bottle. Yeah, I yeah. totally misunderstood. Yeah, no, but it's still it's a clear bottle that's a, and bleach okay. is white. Yeah, but if you're three, you don't you have no idea. Okay, and so you know, but then you know, but then she burns the kitchen down. <laughs> I turn on a toaster oven, burn down our kitchen. <laughs> Bailey I and mean, Bailey almost probably not welcome. Sounds like payback. Yeah. Jeff Lionel. I live in Lebanon, Tennessee with my wife, and we are huge fans of the show. We were at the live taping at Zany's, and we both agreed Aaron was funnier than we thought he'd be. My wife is in an emergency room. Hmm, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I think we My wife are. is in an emergency room doctor at Vanderbilt. If you ever get there for a visit, make sure to ask for her. I'm a woodworker and would love to make something for the show or for baby breakfast. Free of charge. I believe Brian and I would be great friends. If uh, you ever want to hang out. Let them know. You and uh, Jeff. I would love to, Jeff. Yep. There come, you go. Come to Lebanon. Give you a ride. Yeah. What would you need? What would you like made out of wood? Oh, that's a good question. Thought about this? You, um, have, you a, have good furniture? A crib. No, a crib. Well, I could throw that on him. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's pretty big. He offered. Right? He offered. <laughs> Free of charge. He's like, oh, God. All right. Yeah, we Ex- need, uh, an extra bedroom. <laughs> yeah. We need this uh, half bath. We're, we need another bath. Yeah. You know, Jeff is like... <laughs> I mean, he's like working for, you know. Are we going to be friends or not? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Jeff and his wife, you're at the emergency room all the time too. So like you'd be, <laughs> you just would be him and his. In their life. Yeah. They're yeah they're just like, golly, dude, he's never not around us. <laughs> How do we not already know each other? <laughs> yeah. We just have him here at all times. Uh, Ryan Rhodes. I am roughly the same age as Nate and have three beautiful children, but the thought of having another absolute terrifies me. So I scheduled a vasectomy. As the doctor is prepping me for the procedure, he asked me if I would be okay if he interviewed another interviewed another doctor he was thinking of hiring during, during the vasect, vasectomy. I said, okay, and he pages the nurse to send the other doctor back, doctor back to our room. Keep in mind, I'm on full display, and the doctor <laughs> has done all the prep work and just about to start surgery. The, do, the new doctor enters the room with a hearty, hello, folks. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the nervous energy or what, but before my doctor can even respond, I yell, let's go, folks. <laughs> I look up to see both doctors staring at me, probably wondering why I'm so adamant about starting this immediately. <laughs> to make matters worse, I just kept replaying the situation over and over in my head and found myself chuckling throughout the procedure, so much so that the doctor had to actually tell me to stop laughing. He assured me afterwards that no one had ever laughed during a vasectomy before, and he for sure thinks I am a psychopath. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Nate, Aaron, and Beanball for making a really <laughs> uncomfortable situation go a little easier. Man, that's funny. That's amazing. That is a tough, you know, that's a tough, you know, it's like you might have an interview. Like, it's just, you want to go like, well, why don't you got to jam it in that much? Like, I would, you know. How busy are you, dude? Yeah. You can't and go you meet in your office go, somewhere. And this other doctor, how about you not hire because you walk in and go, hello, folks. Like you're not, you're, you make some big grand entrance to be like, he, Ryan should have been like, yo, you, the whole thing is not good, dude. Like, I'm sorry I'm laughing. You got half the hospital in here. You're like, do you mind if I run some errands while we do this vasectomy? I took it as. I'm just laid out. Like, I took it as maybe. 
he's asking him questions in the interview about the procedure, things like that. I, get, I, mean, Maybe, I it just seems so I'm pretty jam packed yeah. today, dude. I got this interview. I got to interview this guy. Can I just do it while? Do you I'm... mind if we may or may not hire this person? <laughs> do you mind if he comes and see you at your most exposed, <laughs> and hopefully he stays here and doesn't ever talk about it, or he might go, and you could be a story. He goes, yeah, and you, you'll see him later bartending and he's like yeah i thought about being a vasectomy doctor then i just changed my mind so now he goes big and then he's like this is the guy i did that remember that one interview i did it was this guy right here like that's the risk that you're running of just going you just being like you know does he really want to do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. that's uh, what i would be the guy never got hired <clears throat> that's great it's like you're doing that it's like don't even just just let him come in. Like, mm-hmm. I would be like, I don't even want to know. I would feel better, like, you know. Yeah, knock me out and do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. They not knock you out during that, I guess? Apparently not. Probably sedate you. Yeah. I mean, that would be first on the list of surgeries I'd want to be knocked out for. Yeah. Other than, like, heart surgery. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. would be pick. first. Well, you had to pick <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> You go. Do you mind if everybody comes in? My my wife and I have been fighting. Do you mind if she comes in during this vasectomy? We just need to and been spend time together. Our babysitter called out sick. Do you mind if my kids, all my kids and my family come in? <laughs> I told you the story about going to have a spot roof for my face. <laughs> And they told me to put on a hospital gown. And I'd never, I've never been in the hospital. Yeah. So I didn't know if you're supposed to take your clothes off or not. <laughs> so I started, I was, for some reason in my head, I thought it'll look dumber if I still have my clothes on yeah. when they come with the gown. Oh, yeah, on. jeans on. So I just started stripping down. And right when I just get down to the bar, the nurse knocks on the door. And I was like, just a minute. And she's like, it's just me, hon. And I was thinking, man, yeah. we just met. Yeah. And she comes on in with an intern. Yeah. And I'm just whatever. She's like, oh, you didn't have to take your bottoms off, hon. Yeah. <laughs> so where was sh- your spot getting removed? <laughs> right here. Oh, next to your eye. <laughs> next to your eye. <laughs> yeah. So then she has to leave the room and I have to completely put all my clothes back on <laughs> and then the gown on. <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> Why did you have to put the gun on to begin with? <laughs> to just keep blood from like oh, yeah. you know getting on me because yeah that <laughs> I, was, I completely stripped down. <laughs> took your jeans off. <laughs> I took everything off. I mean, you're in my like, socks are off. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a normal doctor's office. Like they're going like yeah, we don't do stuff like this, man. Like you had she had an intern with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Walks in. <laughs> did they laugh? I think they were more startled than anything. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then I have to put it all back on, and then he comes in with her and the intern, yeah. and I'm just like, I know they've been out there talking about oh, you. Oh, yeah, everybody still talked are. about you. Yeah. Oh, everybody. Yeah. That was like, and they went home. <laughs> the guy in 431 yeah. took all his clothes yeah. off. Oh, good. <laughs> he, he looks like he would have. <laughs> <Is it good? laughs> yeah. They know immediately who you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> My wallet's gone. My wallet's gone. Uh, they should, I do think all that kind of stuff, they should be, they should like, I feel like they deal with that so much that they don't think they should say it. And I think doctors should say, hey, we need you to strip all the way down or we don't. Or maybe you just go like, unless they say strip all the way down, you just don't do it. Since then, I've had a couple of small procedures and they told you exactly what you're supposed to take off. Yeah, it's like they need to They need to do that. Because I, 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 you don't know. They just assume that you're in and out. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand. I get the reasoning behind you being like, it's like you go get a massage and you're like, what am I supposed to do? You know, and it's like they can just be like, do whatever. Feel comfortable. You're like, just tell me. Mm. Just say what I'm supposed to do. I'm not, you know, and it's the, it's the same, you know. Yeah. Just imagine Brian at the dentist sitting there. <laughs> yeah. starts taking his clothes. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> his seat's cold. He goes, well, why would you say that's weird? Say that. <laughs> just for a cleaning? Yeah. <laughs> That is a why did why, why did they say why does the gown not always go all the way <laughs> anyway? Well, you mean it's tied in the yeah. back? I don't know, but anyone up until then, anyone I visit in the hospital, yeah, that's all they were wearing. Yeah, so I associated with that's yeah, you're supposed to take your clothes off. Yeah, <laughs> to get it done on your eye. <laughs> I mean, they don't. They could have almost done this procedure in your car. <laughs> like it's not. 
<laughs> it's not even a procedure that really needs you to. You stick your head in, stick your neck in, and the rest can stay outside. <laughs> That's great. We love our Helix Sleep mattress, and it was unbelievable to unbox. It is still so crazy that a mattress can arrive in a normal box and then grow into just a, a huge mattress. Way easier than going to the mattress store. As we've always said, we loved watching opening it. It was awesome. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. They have soft, medium, and firm, match firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment. Uh, we, as we always say, we have had a, a, I have a comedian on our Dustin Chaffin sleeping on our uh, Helix mattress right now, and he loves it. So if you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz. You order the mattress that you are matched to, and that the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. Never have to go to a mattress store again. We were matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. It has medium support, and everyone that sleeps on it is surprised how good they sleep. It is soft and comfortable. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They will even pick it up for you if you do not love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com. Nate. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Nate. Also, our new partner has a product I've started using every day. I had it today. I started using Athletic Greens because I do not uh, eat the best, as most people know. I'm trying to change it, but I'm trying to be uh, – I want to be more healthy. It's a way to get all the vitamins. I drank – I mean, I drank it this morning. Uh, you just – it's super easy. You get everything. It's one – you don't have to worry about it anymore for the rest of the day. The taste is great and easy to start your day with it. I do one scoop of powder with water, shake, and drink. The travel packs are great for when uh, I'm on the road, which is all the time, and uh, easily pour in a bottle of water. Uh, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals. It is cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. The subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, super important in the winter months. Right now, it is time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially with cold and flu season. It is just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com. Again, that is athletic greens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Guys, I have a new secret weapon in my weight loss challenge. Ooh. It's my Allbirds wool dasher mizzles. I'm wearing <laughs> yeah. them right now. Oh, yeah. I now go walk. I try to run. I like doing it now because of my new shoes. These guys won't even weigh. They're scared, but I, yeah. I'm ready to weigh in because I'm losing weight. Out they don't add much to your weight either. They're light. They're very light. I have the same gun. They're very light. You slip them on. It's great. They're very comfortable. They're uh, weather-repellent performance running shoes. The first shoe of its kind, sustainable, made from natural materials with low environmental impact on the planet. Now, if I miss my plane at the airport, running through the airport, I don't even care because yeah. I'm, I'm going to make it because my <laughs> shoes are so comfortable. You're late on purpose. Yeah, Absolutely. All birds built the wool dasher mizzle using natural materials to have a low environmental impact so you can break a sweat without breaking the planet. This winter, keep your feet cozy and dry with the All Birds wool dasher mizzle. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A L L B I R D S.com. Indeed. There's nothing you can't accomplish with a great team. This podcast is kind of like a team, right? This is like the mm -hmm. Chicago a Bulls. Broken, a broken team, a but. Broken. <laughs> I think we're going to get back to it with Indeed. <laughs> I think we need Indeed. Yeah. yeah. If we need to find new members of this podcast, I know what we're going to be using. We're going to be using Indeed. When you're assembling the right set of skills at your company, you need all the help you can get. I've actually used this product on both sides. I've used it as a guy looking for a job, and I've used it as a guy looking to hire somebody to work at my company. It's very easy. Streamline the entire process. Uh, Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. 
That's what's nice about this is you're not having to juggle all these different services. It's all done through this one platform, even the interviews. You can do virtual interviews. You don't have to set up Zoom meetings or any of this other stuff. You hired Dude, people? I did, yeah. For Aaron Land? Uh, not for Aaron Land. It's oh. my old, the last job I had oh, okay. before I yeah. went full-time comedy. I had to hire somebody. So it was fun. It was a fun process. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Reading, reading resumes and everything. Uh, with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, as soon as you post a job listing, you get a short list of quality candidates, resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications, so you're not going to have to pay if, you know, if Brian fills out his application again <laughs> for your job. You don't have to pay for that because they know it's not a good, it's not a good match. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the virtual interviews, that's a really cool new feature of this. No need to install anything extra. Works right through your browser. It's very easy, very simple. It's a no-brainer. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash Nate to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash Nate. Do you remember the person's name you hired? Yeah, Jenny Hand. Oh, do you still queue up on them? I, I do queue up I with like Jenny. That. Yeah, yeah, she's good? Yeah, she's great. How's she doing? She's good. She she left that job pretty quick. but she, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. she She got a promotion. She was yeah. moving up. She's moving up. Yeah. Um, we're also brought to you by Upstart. If you have multiple credit card balances each month and are only paying the minimums, I feel like they're talking to me right here, uh, barely making a dent in your credit card debt, it can be discouraging. It can pile up. It can be overwhelming. Upstart can help you pay off that debt quickly so you can feel like you're finally getting ahead, whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating debt, funding personal expenses. Over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. So you got a clear date. To, to work towards. That really simplifies things. They don't just look at your credit score alone, thankfully. Upstar's model <laughs> considers other factors like your income, your employment, other personal info that you provide all through the site. You can check your rate super quickly in just five minutes, and it doesn't impact your credit score for checking this out. And you can get loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. That would be really nice to do. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, other information provided. Go to upstart.com slash Nate, upstart.com. Slash Nate. Uh, all right. So this week, uh, we're going to talk about talk shows. I just did one. How many of you have been on total? Uh, late night. Uh, I think we just count. Like, I want to say, I kind of lost count. I want to say 10 tonight shows. Mm -hmm. And then two late nights with Fallon and four Conans. 16. Wow. And That's then a lot. It's a lot. And I mean, that that though those and then I haven't I've done anything you know daytime I don't think I did any daytime I did like the one uh, like I did one in uh, the Mexican one well like Rich Eisen Rich Eisen I've done stuff like that yeah I've done enough now that it's like you kind of know what to you know and I've been in, in enough like the, you know NFL I went and did something like you know I've done enough now but like, as far as the Tonight shows and stuff like that I've done ten. 10 with Fallon, 16 total. Had you ever, or have I you? I think ever? 10. And Even Rogan, which is bigger than yeah. maybe all of those yeah. combined. Yeah. You know? Well, that's true. Yeah. Have you ever gone to a taping? Uh, like just as a fan? Uh, did I ever go? I don't think so. I think my parents did once. Uh, but I don't think I did. I don't think I ever did. I mean, I guess the closest thing, we went to PTI, if you count that. Yes. Yeah. I've done. I've been to Fallon, Letterman, and Conan. Just in the audience. Yeah. Oh wow, that's pretty yeah. cool. I've yeah. never been to any of those. Really? Aren't they all much smaller than you imagine? I, uh, everybody says that. You kind of notice that right away. You're like, it's way smaller. Uh, I think so, but it's 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 basically like two rows that go up. So it's it would be like I mean a section of bleachers. It's basically like there's an aisle down the middle and then rows. Yeah. And say there's 20 people sitting all the way across and then it goes 
30 rows up or something. It's like yeah. that amount of people. Okay. And so Conan and all that stuff was like that. The Conan, when he went to TBS, uh, needed that one, that audience was pretty big. It was, and, and the hard part with that one was when you'd go out and do comedy, you were actually pretty far away from the crowd. Uh-huh. You were kind of over off to the, like, you know, like if you remember TBS Conan, when he walked out, uh, where he the well, we walked out to stand up, but you'd walk out and make a right, and that's where Conan was sitting. So Conan was kind of in the middle, and so if you did stand up, you would there's a pretty big gap between you and the the person in the front row, and then there's other people that are way off to the side. They were pretty far away from you. I went to a taping of Conan. Like I've been with friends who were on it. Yeah, but I don't think I've I don't know if I've just like I don't think I ever said it in like a crowd. Like, but I, I've done it where I wasn't performing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they did a uh, five-year analysis of late-night TV from 2016 to 2020. What celebrity do you think was on the most? What was the years? 2016 to 2020. Uh, I, 20, ask, I ask you this. I don't think you'll – I mean, it's someone you know, but I don't think you'll get it. Ryan Reynolds. Uh, it's a good guess. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, could it be it's good, Tom Hanks? Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tom Hanks is a good guess. Yeah. Uh, Ice Cube. Oh. 22 appearances over five seasons. Oh, really? How would I be up there? But that's over yeah. however many. It's more than five years. Yeah, but Probably I've done 10. 10 over. Those are all panels, though. Oh, you know what I mean? That's the count. You only got one panel. Dude. Oh, yeah. okay. One and a half. I would say a stand-up could even probably be more than. Uh, t- I think it should. 22, well, I guess not. 22 over five years. That's a, that's a lot. Now, I don't know what that they characterize him as. This is. I see a rapper as an actor because then they break it down by which actor was on the most. Yeah. Brian Cranston. Yeah. But that was the peak of Breaking Bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, athlete. Uh, someone that's going to Shaq. Yep. Wow. Pretty good. Shaq. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I think it's someone that's going to be wanting to go on and like have the time to go on. I was going to say Charles Barkley yep. would be up there too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And reality TV star. Uh, Paris Hilton or The Situation. Uh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then they did uh, broke it down by who has on the most athletes, reality stars, actors, stuff like that. Oh, round it out: Ricky Gervais and Nick Kroll each had twenty appearances. Oh, hmm. um, oh, Will Forte, Pat Oswalt, Martin Short, each with nineteen. Uh, All funny so, guys. Um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel had the most musicians, athletes, and reality stars. Conan had the most comedians. There you go. Yep. Stephen Colbert had the most politicians. None of this surprises <laughs> okay, us. No, no. Yeah. And James Corden had the most actors. Yeah. Okay. So Fallon wasn't mentioned. So that's, I don't know. I thought that well, was Well, Fallon, like, they were yeah, switching. Like, Tonight Show was, like, going back and forth. Like, Tonight Show's been throwing a lot of comics on now. Conan's always been very, very good. I mean, Conan was the first one I did. And it was, Conan was always a very good. They always had comics on. They, uh, so, yeah, they did it. I remember my goal at the beginning was try to, I wanted to do it once a year. Once I got on. I was like, I need, I need to do it once a year. And I think I have. Yeah. I don't know if, yeah, I think I've done it once every year, I think. I'm almost even still now. I don't really now, I don't think if that's not as much of a goal I have now, but I still kind of keep an eye on it. And I think I've done it every year. Even you, 2020, you did it over Zoom, right? Yeah. And, and you yeah. did a set on it yeah. during COVID. Yeah, I actually just did it. So I just did it. I've already done it this year. Yeah. So. You've averaged more than one a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's because I stick with Tonight Show. Yeah, I think I could do other ones, but you just kind of stay loyal. It's like picking an airline, you know. Or yeah, a you hotel. stay. You just kind of stay loyal. I mean, I was like, I did Conan at the beginning. But then it was like when Fallon went to. Uh, I just did Conan again, and then that's when I got with Late Night with Fallon. But then me and Fallon took that show out, and then we uh, and there's like the Nab again, then he Tonight Show, and then and so then just you stay with Michael Cox who books the Tonight Show. He's I mean, uh, J P Buck who booked Conan was great. Great. Him and Michael Cox were, uh, for Booker wise, they were just really, really good. They were really, they were great. Dealing with them were great. Uh, they just knew, you know, I mean, it's a whole thing. When you first get in there, it's like, you know, it's hard. They're taking a the comic. Usually it's your first time going to be on TV. And so you got to, they got to make sure that your, their job's on the line to make sure they're getting the right person. And, uh, and so JP at Conan was always really, really great. And then, uh, Michael Cox, who's at, uh, Tonight Show, I mean, he's been, Tonight Show had a few different ones. I mean, I was going, when I was doing the Tonight Show, that was the thing. I used to be everybody's first, 
when they hired a new person, I ended up being a lot of people's first person. So that's why I, did, I had to run because they were switched. They were trying to find the right booker, which they have Michael Cox now, who's uh, the right booker. And he's great. But then they, and they're not saying the others were bad. It was like, whatever they fit. I think someone, some one of them was at Corden maybe now. But whatever reason, they, you know, just switches around. But I was a lot of people's first because it was like, not to say anything about me, but it was like, I've done the show. I was a clean comic. It was like, I was very safe to be like, yeah, just to get my, wet my whistle. I'll just book uh, Nate, you know. So when you walked out, is, what about it seems so different than you would have imagined, if anything? When I first did it? Yeah. Uh, or even now, if it was our first time, what would it be like? I guess, it, yeah, it would be uh, everything smaller than you probably think. That kind of, I mean, I almost weirdly, that's I'm kind of used to that now. So like, I don't really think about that now. But I would say the fact that it's off, it's a room off to the side. Like, you know, it's a, it's everything's a little bit smaller than you probably think it is going to be. And that's like anything that you would go see on TV. Uh, <clears throat> I would, you know, it's, I don't know, seeing people back, seeing the famous people walk around backstage is kind of crazy. Like whoever you're on with, you're like, Joey Lou Strifus was my first mm. Conan I did. Wow. She was a guest on it. And uh, so, and she was a guest on another one. Yeah, too. I remember that. And so I never met her, but, uh, but you just see her walking. I remember seeing Val Kilmer. Mm -hmm. Val was like very funny. That's he tweeted crazy. you, right? Yeah. He ended up like tweeting me and like, uh, yeah, I remember Val. Val would just walk like through and you're like, I mean, he could just pop in your room. And <laughs> uh, I think he went to Julie Louis Dreyfus and said he was getting married or something. And he just goes in her room and goes, uh, you're coming to my wedding. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then he walked away and that was it. I don't know if it was even, it was just like, he just, you know, he was like his own dude. Yeah. And then that's where he tweeted something about me. And then I responded. Then he didn't realize it was me. And then he did. And then I mean, he was like, but he was like a cool dude. Like, and I didn't really, you know what? I don't even know, like. I really talked to him there. Yeah. It was only afterwards, like, kind of in social media, because it's like you're not just walking up to people. I remember seeing uh, the guy from Godfather. What's the old man? Uh, Marlon Brando. No. Oh, uh, James Caan. No, I think it's Godfather. Uh, he was in a. He was on Conan a ton towards the. In real skinny, uh, maybe he's he was old. Uh, I want to say his name starts with an A. Uh, Godfather, something uh, Al Pacino. No, <laughs> it's not like that. I don't know. Okay, think of it. Uh, I think his name starts with an A. I think he's in Godfather. I thought that's where he was from. I don't know. Like uh, real skinny. Uh, is there a guy that used to be on Conan from The Godfather? Look up like that. Steve Buscemi. No. Do they always come to your dressing room before the show? Uh, I, I Abe Vagoda. Abe Vagoda. There you go. He was the guy. Abe Vagoda. Uh, so uh, I remember seeing him a few times because he would he would be on there a lot. Like he'd come on for whatever. Uh, Fallon does. Fallon always did. Conan, I don't think did. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever talked to Conan. I think he would for his, he ended up knowing some people when he was friends. I don't think I really ever talked to Conan. Maybe afterwards when you stand there and say what's up and blah, blah, whatever. And then he'll, then he kind of goes back. Uh, you know, it's a job. I mean, like you, you see it where you're like, yeah, these dudes are doing it every night. Like they get done with the show and like, even, even like us, I mean, as a comic, when it's your first time, you're like, yeah, it's like, you're like, I want to stay here forever. And then, but everybody else is like, yeah, dude, I, I'll come and I gotta go do this for like five minutes and then I'll be back. Like, you know, they just kind of come in, come out, and then they leave. Uh, I guess the more, the bigger the star they get. Uh, so I think they would go, I think they'd probably go to those. Like, uh, but they cone in them, they would stay and found stays. That's always a big deal. That's a big deal for comics. The hosts that stay, the what, host that. What do you mean stay? After the show? No, stay and watch the set. Oh, right. Like Colbert would started doing some where like you get on Colbert, but like at the end of Colbert, they would just say, uh, he, when the show was over, they would just say, have the audience stay and they tape five comics and they do five sets and Colbert doesn't even, he doesn't stay. Mm -hmm. And so then they're just like, we'll put it in whenever we need to put it in. So you wouldn't even know when you're going to be on. And then they would be like, all right, you're going to be on tomorrow, which you're getting the point of being on, but there was something about, the old school way is that's the the point is to be the guy's got to be there. Yeah. Like that was the whole 
Yeah. That's everything. That's it's the make- coolest part of a Tonight Show set now is when it pans out and you can see – yeah, the silhouette of uh, Jimmy Fallon laughing. That's that yeah, that's that takes everything away. You know, it's like it's 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 it feels businessy. I mean, not that you're not going to do it, but it it's like the point of it is like you're like you want to make the guy laugh. Like that's the the, the host. You make the host. Like, that was like if he's laughing, the audience. You know, it's like it just made it great, and that's what you know they do good with tonight's show is like you see like Fallon like sits there and you know when I just did this one where I did the panel it's like we stayed for Gail the singer like Mm -hmm. and so I got to sit there and like you sit there and you you're like listening to music and you're you know it's like you're kind of in the dark but you're watching and you're it's like that's the yeah it's cool that's everything dude like that's uh so some I know some shows don't do that and you know I never dealt with that though I always had the host there I remember maybe the first time you ever went over to the couch after your set when he says goodnight, Fallon. Mm-hmm. And I said to you, uh, look, I think you need to smile more yeah. because it, it made you look yeah. worried. <laughs> yeah. And you told me you did it next time. You said you thought about that. Yeah. And I've then, done it from here on. Yeah. And then- See, I take criticism. There's a clip uh, from a recent, what is this? This shows how far oh. you've come. Yeah. So this was on, I got this Laura show into me. I think someone sent me this too. It was, uh, so Jamie Lynn Spears did an interview uh, on, uh, I bet no one thought I was about to say that. (laughs) It's like, you got to wrap your head around like, what? (laughs) So Jamie Lynn Spears, she just did that interview, I guess, with, about Britney Spears. I don't know anything about that. I don't know that. But whatever it was, she did some interview, I guess the, you know, I don't know the whole I don't know the whole Britney and Jamie Lynn thing. Okay. Uh, but so this guy's talking about uh, Jamie Lynn Spears on Britney Spears' reaction interview. What does her body language reveal? And this is a, these guys, I guess, study body language. There's, uh, going back to this sitting, there's a, a comedian named Nate Bargatze. He's from Nashville. And when he sits, that's the most comfortable and confident looking guy sitting I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> when he sits down on a talk show or on a podcast or whatever, if you, I'll put up a picture of him. If you check that out, this is the most relaxed guy, the most confident looking guy in the world. And he's a comedian. This guy is the most confident sitter I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> That's pretty good. Come a long way. Come a long way. Go show, like, if the, well, I don't know if we could even, the Jamie Lynn, like, see, look at her. She's miserable. Oh, I need to talk to her. You could counsel her. Yeah. 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 She's, she's not as competent of a yeah. sitter as you are, man. Yeah. That's a very funny, I mean, look, that's awesome. That's such a funny compliment. The, he's the most competent sitter I've ever seen. See, in I'm, my the, whole I'm the greatest average American. And this guy, <laughs> there's there's everything I do that's the very average. Hmm. I'm just I'm on another level, dude. Like I'm on. I order McDonald's better. Yeah. I do. I don't go to a nice restaurant. I go to the average American places, but I crush it when I go there. Does he <laughs> run? No, he sits better no. than anybody. Though. Yeah. Does he jog? He goes. He it's a it's a jog that looks like a run. That's how. Like I don't ever get exercise. <laughs> I'm like, I'm skinny enough, but I'm still fat. I'm not, you know, like I'm, I'm in the middle of everything, but I'm nailing it. Uh, no, they, yeah, yeah, it was very nice. That's uh, you know, it is nice to know when you go on these things, it's not like you sit there and try, I intentionally do try to think, let me look comfortable. Let me, yeah. uh, let me be aware you do over time, get better of you're in front of people a lot. So you're not as I'm. I'm trying to make the experience of me even being here on this show. It needs to be the same as when if I saw you and we were when we had lunch together. Yeah. Like I want to see how close I can make these two things, and if I can make the closer those can get, I think it's the easier for you to be funnier and be and do what you do longer. Yeah. Because because the, the 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 least amount you're trying. And having to force it, like if you're a big character, if you're this, like that's exhausting. So if I can get the audience and get you into, and this is what I think, but the closer I can make my me and stage presence be the same. Yeah. And you're not always going to be like that. Like, I mean, uh, you know, if you look at the material, I'm not, I'm not going to just be up there talking about nothing. So the materials, I'm, there's actually jokes or you're, you know, it's, it's not like I'm this frustrated all the time, but as far as like my energy that I give off and everything, 
how close can you get those? Closer I can make those, the better. Because then that then I'm doing it all the time. So now I'm practicing it 24 hours a day. So why would you not want that? You know, why would you not want to sit there and and so I, I it is fun to hear that because it's uh you know, it's like I, I, mean, I sit with my legs crossed a lot. I just there's only really I don't really know what else how to sit. It, like you sit there and yeah. like I mean, because a lot of times when you go sit down on the chair, like you can see people. The hardest part I would say is I always think like you got to be comfortable. Like we're doing right. So the Grammys, like so when we go, I do the Grammys. We had to get uh, you got to get a tuxedo. So we got fitted for tuxedo and like these shoes I got. You're kind of like, well, they're not the most comfortable. Shoe. And like, I don't know. And it's like, the stylist is like, yeah, that's what it is. It's not comfortable. Uh-huh. And I'm like, but I mean, in my head, I'm like, well, I think you could get comfortable. Like, right, right. you could still do something. And I mean, the shoes are not that they're not comfortable, but they're not tennis shoes, obviously. They're they're like shoes, like tuxedo shoes, like our boots. Or, so, but it's interesting. To th- I always think, like, well, you got to. You could get, you can, there's some meat, meat in the middle. Right. Like where you could go, like, then you, then I think it helps you think outside the box. And you think, well, I'm going to, what if I just wear, that's just someone could be like, why well, he wears it. And I'm not doing this, but if you wore Air Maxes or something, like you could just, you get, I think you get more c- comfortable and you get more confident. I guess it's maybe the less you feel like you have to prove. Mm-hmm. Like you feel comfortable in your, where you're at. You don't feel, you know, I don't know. No. That was a very yeah. easy show to do, ridiculousness too. Oh, is that what that uh, picture's from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's when it did like it was they just do a good job. You know, it's like, you know, but it's you are somewhat aware of it, but you try to be like, I don't know. You're like, I as as long as I'm doing me and I don't feel like I have to I notice like doing some uh I've done a uh, a few like uh the animated stuff where you're doing the voice and it's like if you're trying to create another voice that's not your voice and then it's like well you go do this and then I gotta go do it again in three months and then it's like well I don't remember the voice I did like you know yeah. so it's like to me it's like I'm like uh, that's how I always did everything if I acted if I did anything I was like you're getting this <laughs> if you, you either want this or you don't if you like maybe I could be serious maybe mm-hmm. I can be funny maybe I can do I can do I could go off that but I can't not do this uh-huh. But I mean, someone that's a character person, I guess, is completely different, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't know how to, I don't know how to get in that mindset. You could do voices, kinda, not not of specific people, but no, just like but di- just different, different kinds of voices. You can fluctuate. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. I mean, my voices on stage are all the same. It's my voice. My wife is my voice. My me is my voice. Like every person I enter any interaction I talk about on stage, it's just my voice. Wow, that just came out. That video it's already got ninety one thousand views. Yeah, so a lot of people, people know I'm a, a lot of people know I'm a confident sitter. Came out two <laughs> days ago. Yeah. What about uh, daytime? Do you watch daytime? Um, no. Do you Today Show? We don't. No, get none time of the that. none of the network yeah. stuff. Sports. I, Center. I think I like that it's on. I could see it being. But your mom thing, does, but, right? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's. I guess maybe she watches something. I don't think she watches it. I don't remember talking about it. Like, I don't, it's we're not like we just know, like, she watches the Today Show. I don't think so. I thought, well, maybe growing up or something. I don't know. If- oh, like it would be on? Yeah. I, I think it was a zoo every morning. It was just chaos. <laughs> like, our, In we're the just house? not, yeah, yeah, we're just not a, we're not a, Getting, you know, you guys, you had roosters waking you up. We, had, like we watched we, the Ralph Emery show. Yeah. Y'all get up as a family and have a family <laughs> breakfast every morning. We are never getting up in time to it not be just complete chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we would, there was no like quietness in them. There was no, it was like, you're up, we're all up, we're, it's, we're moving. Yeah. And it's like, everybody's going to get out of the house now. Right. That was like, we never had morning anything it was you're lucky we got to the place that we were you know we were there we had 6 a.m family prayer every morning yeah my mom that's would nice. yell from the foot of the steps wake yeah. up and we'd all come down yeah that's sit, good. Though. sit in a circle in yeah. the living room yeah. and then go back to bed morning <laughs> he'd would you want to go back to bed we gotta get ready for school yeah after yeah that. yeah that's good yeah ours would just be my sister, I remember Abigail, you know, she's nine years, 10 years younger, nine, nine and a half. and a half. And she's, uh, she would be, uh, her, she would have tangles. I just remember that. They would fight about combing her hair 
it is so much that I just, I was like, when we had a daughter, I was like, oh gosh, this is going to be a train wreck. It's a nightmare. The you're, you're, it hurts. It Ab, you know, turns out just Abigail, <laughs> just just a her problem. Yeah, just an <laughs> Abigail problem. So, uh, yeah, Harper does good. I mean, I I pictured when we when we were like you're having a girl. I was like, I just thought we're gonna it's gonna be blowouts of just because that's what it was, and then but now it's not. We have one, you know. Yeah. It's it's not you know we have one kid versus three trying to get ready. But I remember them fighting over But the that. Tangles, I mean, that was only her, right? That was Abigail. Yeah. yeah. But she would just always have Tangles in her hair and like it would just, to get them out, I got to get them out. I got to get them out. Just, I mean, it is just, if you could be at our ass, I mean, it would, people wouldn't even know how to. I mean, I think a lot of families are like that. Like, you know, but it's, you know, you, it's funny when you go see another, like Laura's family is like a little more, it's a, uh, it's con- like Laura didn't, she doesn't have that where it's like, you know, it's the Bargettis. Yeah. We're the Bargettis. Like, we, you just know about us. Like, you know, if you spend the night, you're like, hey, it's going to be the Bargettis. It's going to get wild. Mm-hmm. Everybody in my family's wild. We're going to get, it's, nothing's going to go as planned. Yeah. And we're going to, but we'll be there. We will have a good time. We'll have a good time. It's a little bit like Curb Your Enthusiasm. There's just, some, there's going to be some like, and then two minutes later, it's just like moved on to something else. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. everybody's in the car and you're fine. And yeah. yeah, you move on. But it's, yeah, it's just complete. It's like a New York City every morning just in a house <laughs> until you get out of the house. Mm. Um, I was reading about, as a fan, the best way to get on TV. Okay. <laughs> Since I'm not going to go the comedy route. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing pretty good. Morning talk shows um, in New York City is the best, the easiest way to get on. Okay. Because they have the crowds outside. And I've been to New York before when Katie Couric and those guys were, were down there. Mm-hmm. And if you get there early enough and stay in, you can get on television. Yeah. And have a sign yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Laura and them tried to do it one time after New Year's. Uh, Laura and her friend, I think Katie or something. And they uh, they they came home. We did, I, we did shows at Caroline's. So we did the New Year's, the ball drop, saw it drop. We get home, and, you know, it's 3 in the morning. And Laura and her friend is there, and like, we'll go see the Today Show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, and I was like, just go do it. I mean, you're it's 4 in the morning. Just stay up. You never go do something like this. Go do it. They get signs. They do all the stuff. They go back down there, not taping the show. So they just stood there, nothing. No one's there. How long I was about to they? say New Year's Day. I wouldn't yeah. think they'd be doing yeah, that. Yeah, well, they weren't. Uh, <laughs> so they got – they got all the way down. I mean, it's a whole thing getting back into the sea. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not like you're like I just run outside. Like you're seeing an eclipse or something. It's yeah. just it's a it's a journey, and then just nothing. Uh, you've never d- been to one, right? So you remember what's the ticket process? No, for for one of these shows. Yeah, no, I have no idea how it works. There's a website one one iota that I think lists all of the shows. On one website, you can go there and try to get on. Some are easier. Fallon's one of the hardest ones. Yeah. John Oliver's very hard. Some of the other ones are easier. And then Fallon, Fallon will do a thing where he'll send an intern to a certain part of New York City, and you got to go find that intern. Yeah. And if you do it, you get tickets. Nick Thune. Is that who's on tonight? Yeah. Looks like oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there, I, it, it's hard to get tickets when, when Fallon took over tonight's show. And I mean, it's, it's still probably one of the hardest. But when he took it over, it was uh, it was impossible. I mean, I remember like if you had, if I had a guest, it was like you couldn't really bring someone. I think I remember stories of like Oprah during her heyday, of like Brad Pitt like couldn't get his mom on. I don't know really? if that was true. Yeah. I don't know. If, I have no idea. I feel like I heard something like this. Yeah. But it was like something like. When when Oprah would be giving stuff away or like or not probably giving stuff away, but like just going to her show and a taping. And it was something like even Brad Pitt was like, Well, can my mom and they're like, No, it's too like it was Oprah probably had to be the biggest of I would imagine. Yeah. Like Laura watched Oprah every, you know, she watched Oprah every day. She watches like she watches these talk Dr. Phil. Uh so her biggest, she was way bigger than like what Ellen Ellen is. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. Ellen's Ellen was very, Ellen's very big, and Ellen was you know, it, but the, it's just the TV was different then. Yeah, when Oprah was on, I yeah. mean, Oprah's, you know, Oprah's Oprah. It's like just its own. 
its own like kind of thing, its own world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but gotta, I mean, gotta start it. Use Channel Five. Yep. Look at that. That's right. She right after TSU. Yep. She was nineteen. Wow. She got hired. You were there. <laughs> no, but my Chris Clark, who I worked yeah. with, was the one that hired her. Yeah. Yeah. And when she had her like fiftieth birthday party on the set and brought in all these celebrities, she flew him in. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 That's great. But yeah, she was as big as it is. I mean, one of the richest people in the world. Yeah. Yeah. They would they do like they do uh this a sign of like people of success from Channel Five. <laughs> <laughs> that they left like they have Oprah. Then they may you maybe you right under. There was a guy who was on um Desperate was it Desperate Housewives? Is yeah. That, yeah. Is that Terry Hatcher? Yeah, that's that show. There was a guy on that show who used to be in our sales department at Channel Five. Right? Really? Was he a major actor in the show? I, I think he was one of the regulars. Man, they get all y'all back together, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the panel, the three yeah, of us. The panel, the three of us. I mean, do you remember the guy's name? Uh, I would know it if I saw it, I think. Dave Williams, Orson Hodge. James Denton. They would do right there at the top. Uh where James Denton, Mike Delfino is his character name, but James Denton is his real name. Oh, oh. this guy worked with you? I didn't work with him, but he used to be in the sales department at Channel Five. So uh, just <laughs> this, no shirt this, on. This dude, yeah. <laughs> just with you right yeah. next to him. <laughs> yeah, me, him, and Oprah, I mean, the yeah. big three. He goes, "I'm trying to be an actor. I'm trying to be a comedian." Uh, he goes, "All right." Uh, so. That would be, yeah, you, him, and Oprah. I would like just to wear the questions. They all got to go to Oprah. <laughs> they come to you, you go, oh, Brian Bates, uh, have you ever met Oprah? They just ask you about <laughs> Oprah still. Like, they wouldn't even know what not to yet, ask. Not yet, right? Not, no, I, tonight, right? Now is my first time. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that would be, uh, I, but I, I would say Oprah's, you know, her giving away stuff was. The car giveaway is one of the biggest moments in tv history as yeah. far as talk show history is everybody got a car yeah um so this was in 2004 she was kicking off her season and i guess they quizzed the audience mm-hmm. and asked them about who they all these people needed a car oh yeah and they thought they were drawing just one underneath the seat yeah um but then when they started reaching everyone had a box containing keys 276 vehicles donated by pontiac wow all the owners end up paying several thousand dollars in income tax. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's where the you get a car, you get a car thing yeah. happened. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, I wonder I if they, to how many get to keep the car versus, yeah. That's the people bringing it back, but yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess that's them breaking out the box before they open it. Oh, yeah. wow. And then everybody gets one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh this is the craziest thing anybody's done on TV. I mean, just to give out this many cars. Yeah, well, like Ellen, I thought Ellen did good with doing some still like this she, spirit yes. of the giving stuff away. Yeah. I think she did good without like blatantly like cause it's like how do you You get a helicopter, yeah. you get a helicopter. Yeah, it's like it was almost like you couldn't top that. And then so it's like Ellen did a good job of the, like I feel like this is only number four of Best Oprah show moments. Like, I don't know what do you see that at the top says number four. Oprah relives the uh, famous car giveaway. Like, how is it not number one? Well, I think this is top 25 TV guides, top 25. of anything, not just Oprah. Oh, it said, oh, uh, it said on the thing, Oprah, uh, oh, I don't top know. the things TV got top best Oprah okay, show. Yeah, you're right. Well, I can't name another Oprah show. I moment. can tell you one that I have on here Tom Cruise. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Tom the Cruise. Couch. So that's maybe, yeah. But I don't know what the other two are. Yeah. Uh, but Tom Cruise is on there. This is number four. <laughs> uh, I rewatched the Tom Cruise. Would it say number three, two, and one? I mean, can you find it? Yeah, I'll look it yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, all right. The Tom Cruise thing, I mean, he does that crazy, but she defended him. Yeah. She said, in the spirit of the show, the way that uh, the audience was asking, the way she was presenting the questions. Yeah. He was just playing along yeah. into it. Yeah, she kind of defended him as far as just how crazy he acted. Because that just what made it the tone change on him of like being. I think it was about that time when he was saying some other stuff that. And they're like, "Yo, this dude's crazy." Yeah, yeah. And then of course, he and Katie Holmes split up. Yeah, not too long after that, or or I don't know how long it was, but they did yeah. split up. Yeah, and that's what she was. That's what he was jumping up and down about. Was yeah. 
talking about Katie Holmes. Yeah. Number two was the Tom Cruise moment. Number one is a flash mob, which I don't even know what this is. Oh. What's number three? I almost think I know the flash mob. And this might be the first flash mob thing that ever happened. Uh, uh Yeah. Yeah. And, and 2019 producers pulled off an over-the-top yeah. surprise for Oprah with the help help of tens of thousands of fans and the Black Eyed Peas. So they surprised her? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Still, the car thing's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I would put I the car thing above I think people this. talk yeah. about that a lot more than this. But I do. I remember this. This was towards the end. Like, and then, uh, yeah. A couple more. Uh, well, more than a couple. Larry King. Uh, he and Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando rarely ever did interviews. And then he did a sit down with him, I think, at his house. And they sang together and kissed at the end. Yeah. And it was very, very weird. It's at the very end of this yeah. clip. But it's just so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's already it's bizarre from the jump, yeah. dude. There's you know sometimes you got to sit when when television was four by three. Yeah, like the you had to sit a lot closer, so it just looks super awkward to begin with. Can we but listen? he like he's so he, uh, Marlon Brando never did interviews. No, I think it was the first one <laughs> yeah. in a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I very like, yeah, like, and then the other. <laughs> It's bizarre. The other Larry King one I have, which you've probably seen, is the one with Seinfeld. Yeah. Where Seinfeld gets very upset yes. with him about his question. I watched yeah. it again last night. It's just very funny. Yeah. Uh, Who told? Yeah. Yeah. You think he's actually upset about that? I think, I think so. he's annoyed. I could see. So. It's done. Yeah. This, yeah. this is a very small scale of this. I don't want to always act like I have some. But I, I always try to put myself in the position of whatever they're in. And I could see, like. You know, he's doing he, for him the biggest show on the planet and doing Larry King, the biggest talk show interview on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is what you like. You're supposed to be different, dude. You just asked me everything that everybody else asked me. Like, and you're like, so this, I thought this was supposed to be special, and it's just not. Well, that, the question he asked wasn't like everyone else because he seemed clueless. You want to play the audio real oh, quick? Oh, yeah. Lasted how long? Nine years. 180 episodes. You gave it up, right? I did. Sir. They didn't cancel you. You canceled them. <laughs> you're not aware of this? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking you. You think I got canceled? Are you under the impression I, that I, I got canceled? You, I hurt you, Jerry? I thought don't, that was pretty well documented. Don't this is, most a, shows is this still go CNN? Down. Don't most shows go down a little? Most people do also. You would, But... <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I went off the air. I was the number one show on television, Larry. You were Do you know who I am? <laughs> Jewish guy, Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. 75 well, million viewers last okay. episode. What are you? Don't it take like it canceled. so bad. Well, that's a, a big difference between being canceled yeah. and being number one. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm sorry. We'll be right back. Jeez. <laughs> 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 B movie Can we get opens. a resume in here for B me? B movie opens <laughs> tomorrow. Go over? <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that's the like yeah, that's not knowing. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. It's just very like amateurish. It's like I. It comes off like I don't care. And it, it's like that would be. And like when you do like I, you know, sometimes you can call like. And again, this is not. But if I like if you do like a morning radio show and you call and I, you have to call in to promote shows like I would, and I'm not saying the person has to know, but they're just being like, so what do you do? And you're like, I'm a stand up comedy. Like, what what do people? What kind of jokes do you like? You like, there's no effort in to be like, well, just have a conversation with me at least. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not. You don't have to know me, but like at least like act like. You know, you, I, I'm on this show. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, it's like, I know, like, I'm not saying that, I, that you need me on this show, but at yeah, least. I mean, from my TV days, that annoys me because do some basic research. The producer yeah. should at least give you who this person is so you don't have to ask that dumb question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been at, yeah. I mean, you have been asked where they just have no, like, you're basically going on and you're a commercial and you go, well, I'm a stand up comedian. I talk about my family uh, and a lot of stuff like that. And I, have uh, been doing show, like, you're just that. And that's the whole reason. And then that, that's all you kind of say. And you're like, well, that takes everything. That's not even, why would anybody even come because of that? Uh huh. So you're like, at least like be fun. And I think that's the magnified version. It's, it's everything. Every, people don't care. It's Larry King, probably in his, uh, 
prime of doesn't like I don't who am I interviewing? Like it's you know, in a weird way, like it'll be fine, dude. Like almost like, hey, should we prepare you with some stuff? And he's like, I'm Larry King. I'm Larry King, dude. I got it. Yeah. And then you insulting to be like he's you know, maybe he, when he is in his prime, he's not watching, you know, in a way, you could see it like now, like someone like, like, I don't watch Yellowstone, right? Yeah. So if someone comes and talks to me about Yellowstone, I'll be like, I don't, you know, it's like, you know, is it like a big show? And you're like, and if someone that does is like, are you crazy? Like, mm-hmm. it's the biggest show, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the, but you could be like, oh, it's not in my world, but that's all, but, but as an interviewer, you can't, it's not about your world. Yes. It's about you asking that person. You have to be in that person's world. Yeah. So like you're being like, well, this is what people like. How we get viewers is. And it's like you said, the guy said to you one time, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Put it on yourself if you really yeah. don't know the person. Don't yeah. make them feel bad. Yeah. Uh, Tony Cornell just said that. It was like, not like he goes, I feel like I'm a, he, he, like, he's like, I'm like a idiot out of the loop. Not knowing, I can't believe I didn't know who this guy was. I'm like, but throws it on, like, he's doing so great. And I'm the, you know, I'm yeah. caught up. It's like, at least it's a nice way. And, and being like, yeah, he, did, why should he know who I am? But you're, it's a very polite way. People, politeness is like kind of gone. Sometimes our politeness can be gone. And it's like, it's just a polite way of just saying, like, yeah, just blame you. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. it's just nice to say that. Like, so you don't just go, like, I don't know who this person is or like there's going to be people you don't know i don't watch tv like i used to because I, I i i can't i don't have I, i'm never around it i'm not i don't have enough time and so but it's like i'm not going to be act like it's like no one's watching yellowstone right. or no one's watching soprano you know but like, i don't what is that show like mm-hmm. who watches that <laughs> yeah. i mean there's a lot of shows i have like shawshank ridiculous that's me being ridiculous my parents even think that's ridiculous i haven't seen it so that's me being stupid that i haven't seen it that's not like it's like i don't know if shaw strength's that great i never saw it yeah, you're like yeah. that's well you're the problem right and that would be comes off with that you know with larry king there you're like you're the you know yeah i want to show you exactly i'd be interested if he thought that was a mistake on his behalf Who, larry he felt, king? yeah he should yeah i would almost like if he ever was like i was in that's my most embarrassing you know to be like i just took it too casual yeah I did an interview, or I, I remember one time like hiring someone, and they were about uh, being a lawyer. It's going to be like you have to, inter- like when I you have to get a lawyer, and so I I went and you talked to like three lawyers trying to see which one you're going to pick, and they're all great, but there was one that was like it wasn't like I was even no one knew me or uh, like you know I was like starting to come up, but I remember when uh, we interviewed him, it was too like casual and formal. And it was like, uh, this is not. And I mean, I mean, I think even got maybe got weak. I don't know if you'd hear this. Too casual and informal. Yeah, the interview was like a little too, like, and I, I think that was like an angle of because we knew a lot of people. Like, it's like knew a lot of comics. But I remember it just being like, I, I, I remember wanting to feel some professional. Like you're, yeah. and not saying he's not professional. He's extremely professional. Uh-huh. But I wanted to be like. You know, it was like kind of a big, like it was crazy that I'm even getting to talk to a lawyer. I was like, I can't believe I'm even getting a lawyer. Like this is show business. Like this is a big moment in your own career just to be like, holy, can you imagine? Like, even you, when someone's like, ah, oh, my lawyer did with it. You're like, I don't even know what that means. Like, how do you get a lawyer? Like, how would yeah. you even have a lawyer? Like, in so if you get to the point of getting to hire a lawyer, mm-hmm. you want to, like, you want to feel special. Right. And you want to feel like, you know, when you go talk to agents and managers for the first time, you want them to, you don't want them to overdo it. Like, you know, everybody knows that entourage scene where they're all like, it's yeah. them showing you McDonald's and they, you want a balance of that where you're either, you know, you got to just read the room. It's it really take a chance. But like at the time when it's first, this was my first kind of like, I haven't seen anything. You want to go. And when I met with, uh, when I switched agents and they, like when I did that, like it's a, there's a show that kind of gets put and you sit there mm-hmm. and they, and you want that feeling. And uh, it takes, you know, and so like, I remember, yeah, I don't know what the whole point of this, but. Well, the point is you've been, so for the longest time before that, you've been, your whole life has been trying to sell yourself to people. Yes. And then it comes around and people are trying to sell themselves to you. Yes. And you're like, oh, this is fun. Let me just sit back. Yeah. Y'all are trying to impress me. And then this dude rolls up sweatpants. Yeah. It's like, what's up, dude? Hey, you looking yeah. for a lawyer? You're like, and well, not really. Not and even. it might be you want him to be like that when it's time to be like off that. the clock. Yeah, yeah. Like, or it's like, you know, I want to be able to be that comfortable to call you whenever I want to call you. And I don't feel, 
But I also want to be able to see the, I want to see the professionalism and the, you know, like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, in comedy, like, you get, you want a manager, you want an agent, you want all these things because you, you're like, I'm supposed to have these things. I always say you, you got you to gotta want to want them. And then you realize you don't need, at the, you usually probably don't need a manager as quick as you think you do. But it's good to want one and good to try to get one. And then you also got to do it because you need to see what you, you know, what you want and what you, you know, when it doesn't work, you need to know why it doesn't work. And you need to know like, all right, I didn't gel with this or I didn't fit in with that or I didn't, you know, it's like a lot of it could be just like you look at like the comedian's path you want. And some of it's a bit of that where you're going like, I fit in. I was talking about, I'm with all basically Gaffigan's people. Well, I fit in with Gaffigan. We're kind of along the, you know, so it's like, it makes sense for me to be with that kind of world. Like that's the world that I'll probably be doing, like, you know, that you kind of deal with versus if you're Segur and Burr and they might have the same person because that's, they might fit in that kind of, you kind of just go like, all right, I'm, I feel like I'm this kind of person. So I'll go with a person that gets, you know, not saying you have to follow them exactly, but you could find your own, you know, I mean, I had, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, when people who try to be funny on talk shows, can you pull up that Tyra Banks clip? Oh, yeah. Tyra Banks comes on her show and tells the audience, she comes out and says, I got bit today by a rabid dog. Yeah. And I'm not myself today. Then sits down for a real interview with with a person after yeah. telling the CDR audience. And they're all excited to be there. You can go yeah. ahead and play it. She just sit down with this person about to interview him. So she's coughing yeah. foam out of her mouth. Yeah. Look, Man. this woman's disturbed. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> the insane. audience. Oh the God. audience. It's bombing like, so yeah. bad. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That makes it's uncomfortable like, uh, to watch, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's just, uh, when non-comedians try to do something oh, like yeah. that. That's what happens. Yeah. I've met Tyra uh, Banks. Very awesome. Where? <laughs> uh, Chris Rock opened for Chris Rock. Oh, she came to the show. She came by. We all went out to eat afterwards, and uh, she was awesome. Like <laughs> it was like she was like real down to earth. Like really, she was like, "Oh, y'all did great." Like just hung out, like just chilled out. Like uh, uh, you know. And then I remember we took a car to go get. Uh, it, we took a car to from the Seattle to go eat, and then we were actually going to a plane. And flying, maybe we were in Vancouver or Seattle. I don't remember. But we took a, we were flying. I, I got to fly private with him, like somewhere. But we go and maybe we were in Vancouver. I don't remember. But we go eat at a place. And I remember we had uh, paparazzi chase us. Really? Yeah. And it was like crazy chasing us. Like really, like, I mean, in cars? In cars. Yeah. And so we were driving to go try to eat somewhere because Tara and Tyra Banks and Chris Rock were, they were, I mean, just flooring it, driving around. I mean, it looked like a police chase. And you would see them behind you and you're like, is it? You're like, is that hat? And then uh, Chris Rock's like, security dude got out and was like, hey, go. Like they they parked behind us, whatever. We went and ate. Everybody was nice. They kept the like restaurant open. They were super cool. Tyra and them, to Chris, they took pictures with everybody. Like it was like a great, you know, thing. And then we drove to the airport and a guy, then followed us again to the airport to his plane. And so he drives because you're private. You can just drive right to the plane. So they drive us to the plane and the guy gets parks, gets out of the car and runs onto the tarmac. Oh my and then someone gosh. like stopped him and was like, you can't be out here. You know, it was crazy. Wow. And he was like to try and take pictures and stuff. Yeah. It's the only time I've ever really seen like. Where was that? In Vancouver? Uh, I want to say, or Seattle. Yeah, I can't. It was like, like we were maybe going one versus the other. Like, yeah. but Tyra Banks wasn't on the plane, but yeah. she just went to eat with us. But uh, the unfallenness, because I remember you were just like that God, aggressively. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was like crazy. It was like, man, am I crazy? Or is this car, there's a car that's really trying to like stay behind us. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, you know, and it's like, yeah, I think it's a dude like trying to get these pictures. And, yeah. Man, there's no video of this. So thing. I defend her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tyra. Yeah. I didn't know all this when I yeah, I, thought it was, I could see you, you think something's good. You're yeah. like, ah, I would try it. And then you're, it's, you know. It's so tough about an act out like that. Like, you can't <laughs> bail out of it. You just got to keep going. Like, yeah. she knows it's kind of bombing right when she starts. Yeah. Got to finish yeah. this, dude. Well, to go barking, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> all right. 
a guy died on set on okay. the Dick Cavett show. Oh. This never never got released, but he was a septuagenarian. What is that? Is that 80? Fear of long words. Septuagenarian's uh, 70 or 80. Nine? I think it's 70. Oh, okay. What? He called himself like an old person. What do they call? Septuagenarian? Somebody who's 70 to 90. Is that, is this, this says 70 to 79. That's 70. There was wow. a name for these people. Wow, 70 to 79. Somebody in their 70s, yeah. What is you never heard whoever that? says that? <laughs> Aaron does all the time. Who I've never even heard. Why would you well, not just say I'm in called? my 70s? Or what are the 50s called? I'm calling yeah, myself. You're that. a quinquagenarian, dude. Quinqu- that's that's insane. somebody in their 50s. Who does that? Who would do this? What do we have 40s or does it not go like I think 40s? They're like, get over yourself. Oh, 30 yeah. year old is it? Tricenarian. I'm a, I'm a quadragenarian. <laughs> that, Quadriplegic. That's this is ridiculous. Who does this? Who just goes? They're in their seventies. That's what you say. Uh, the Have you ever heard this? I've heard it in articles. I've never heard anyone call themselves that. You never octogenarian for somebody in their eighties? No, never even. <laughs> I maybe we're reading different things, but I is it like you're talking about a broad like being like. Typical people that are like we we assume this person was. I don't, I've never. Why would you not say the? I mean, 80s? it's not I using would, super casual conversations, but like I don't know a news piece or something, and they're referring to. But like, when do you go learn this word in school? Like, when? What day? Do you just figure it out over time? I think just yeah. somebody uses it around you, and you go, "Oh, what is that?" And, and they you, say it, and then yeah, and then you want to use it. Okay, feels good to use a word that somebody else has to look up. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's not so, like you they they go, hey, today's the day we're gonna, you know, you just describe old people. And I'm like, I missed all these words. No, I don't think it's like that. And I just don't think I ever talked to people. I was never in a business setting. But I guarantee you this week you'll find an opportunity to use this word. I won't use it because I, I, I know you won't, because you don't wanna you're not that kind of guy. I'm not the guy that makes someone feel bad. Right. And so I would think you using that word, you like to look down on people. So any moment that you could be like... Down is where some people are, Nate. Down is where some people are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it would be, yeah, this would be a perfect... So, oh, yeah. Like, I, I always think, I think you would know that I'm trying to use... Like, that's why I would never use those words, because I would always be like, well, I feel like you know I'm, I'm like trying to use this word. Yeah. And I'm, at, you're act, I'm acting like I know it, and I didn't know it. I think it's like misleading. So even when someone would use that word, I would, I'd want to be like, you know, how do you even know what that word means? And then you'd be like, well, I've heard it. Even if I heard it 10 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, I didn't know what it was until now. I feel like it's all misleading. And you want to go, that's not the word neither of us want to use. I think somebody uses this word, no one wants to use that word. Right. It's only being used out of that, uh-huh. out of like trying to look down. There's no, nobody is like, if you go, instead of saying sex engineering, <laughs> do you mind if I just say they were in their 60s? And no one's going to be like, yeah, no one's going to be like, I actually prefer you say we're trying to have a high level conversation here. So could you actually say sexagenarian? No, they would be like, no, yeah, of course. Do you 60? I don't even know right. what the other one meant. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. This is insane. <laughs> I've never even. It's a whole new thing you didn't know about. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. in my quads and I have never heard this. Yeah. <laughs> and I never. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, this septuagenarian was on the Dick Cavett show. He called himself Mr. Organic, talked about his new his health tips, including urine-soaked asparagus. And he bre- he boldly said he was going to reach the age of 100. Then the next guest comes out, and while they're interviewing him, the first guy falls asleep, or at least he appears it does. Turns out later they found out he was dead. He had died of a heart attack on the set. And they didn't show it? They didn't show it. And yeah. I saw an interview with Dick Cavett asking, why didn't you ever show it? He said, it happened so close to airtime that they weren't even sure if the family had been notified yet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nowadays, obviously, somebody would find a clip of it, but yeah. this is 1971. Yeah. yeah. Some destroyed. decency. You had some decency back then. I know. Different yeah. different era. Yeah. Yeah. Then now, it'd be out before it even... It would be running before the episode. And oh, people yeah. People would be like DVR in the episode to go... Tune like, in. To tune in tonight guy to watch die Guy on Die on Air. <laughs> the only thing I remember about that when I, when I was a kid, now it's all the time. Yeah. yeah. Dick Cavett. <laughs> I don't remember Dick Cavett, Phil Donahue. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, I remember Phil Donahue. Well, Geraldo Rivera, there was a fight that broke out on Geraldo. Yeah. And he got his nose broken. Yeah. And that made news before it aired. So the day it aired, 
we set our VCR to yeah. <laughs> record it. Yeah. That was a big deal. That was when like there was chaos happening. And uh it was like, oh yeah. The big <laughs> oh, fight. Golly. Gosh. Uh <laughs> yeah. So this was when <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Geraldo looks exactly the most same now, mustache. by the way. Could he be the most famous mustache? Hitler, probably. Yeah. Mm. But it's not in the same way. Groucho Barks? I agree. They're very different. It's They're very like, different personalities. Yeah. Charlie Chaplin. So it's like, I think if you're, yeah, if you go, what's a famous mustache? You're not going to, you, you know, it's like uh, Sam Tom, Ma- Selleck. Tom Selleck. Tom yeah. Selleck. You said Sam Elliott? No, yeah. I said Charlie Chaplin and uh, Groucho Marks. Oh, okay. Yeah, back in the day, man, they just used to, they just aired stuff that was, uh, I mean, or like having stuff, you like needed that stuff. And now you're in a thing, world where you're like, there's too much of that stuff. Yeah. You're seeing too, there's too many fights. There's too many. I mean, there's what's the, uh, isn't there a whole YouTube that's no, like. world star? Yeah. yeah, yeah isn't yeah, that the all. whole, every video is a fight, yeah. right? Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. So you're like, there's a whole YouTube that's set aside. YouTube was like not even enough that they go, we need. Its own, its own platform. Its own platform oh, yeah. is just fight videos, and there's thousands and millions. Probably. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, how insane is that? A lot of good stuff. You got to take it in moderation, though. Yeah, you can't you can't spend. I've never much been time on, on there. You should go on there every now and then. I don't just know. see what's going on. It's I, I get uncomfortable. It's pretty with it now. Yeah, it's it pretty like, not. It it doesn't. You're you're not even your source of entertainment now is just. Uh, watching someone's life, uh, a low point of their life, and like you're, and it's like I don't. The fun of that is to be like, why should I watch? That is true. That's not. You're just like all your. You're rooting for the this. And we talked about it. And that's you're just you're rooting for the sadness. You think everybody's dumber than you because your only entertainment is this dumb, yeah, dumb, yeah. dumb, dumb. Yeah. So you only because you think, well, I'm not doing any of that. So imagine that's the whole world. And you're like, it's not the whole world. Reality right. shows are like that. Yeah. You're, it's the rare rarity that you're, that they even caught that on video, but now you have phones everywhere. So you're like, uh-huh. but it's not everybody. Right. It's not, it's not even remotely. And if you think it's everybody, well, then now you're part of the, you're part of the problem. The fact that you just think, well, I guess that's everybody. So I guess I'm. They're not me, and you're uh-huh. like, no, most people are you. Right. That's actually rare. Yeah. How many people could you walk up? How many people could you go find that have been done a world star hip hop video? I you walk around the rest of your life, and you probably might never run into someone that's been. So you got to think about that. But then everybody thinks, no, that's everybody. Uh huh. So they think in my neighborhood, ninety percent of my neighborhood is people fighting on world stage. <laughs> Instead of going, no, no, dude, like. Zero percent of your neighborhoods fighting on world stage. Like, I mean, maybe it depends on your neighborhood. Maybe you have a neighborhood that's uh, yeah. more fighting, but right. you know what I mean. Like everybody, that's like everybody treat everybody nice. Assume everybody you meet's a nice person because the odds of you meeting a serial killer are zero. Mm-hmm. Now, it's, when you do, it's very bad because <laughs> yeah. then they they do the serial killing thing. But the the general aspect of it. Not saying you don't, you know, you go, the odds of you, and if, if, you, if everybody just interacted with every human being like that, going, mm-hmm. the odds of this person being crazy are, you know, the odds of me being smarter than this person are probably not high. You think you've ever shaken hands with a, a murderer? I wonder sometimes, like, how many, could you, would you walk around someone that's like, they've killed someone, and like, how many people is it? Well, but it we, can't be that many. Did we figure, there was a serial killer at Vol State that we yeah. talked about. Did we figure out if you were there at the same time? I don't know. It Talking about the, the fast yeah. food killer? Yeah, it was yeah. in the late 90s. Yeah. Is that when you were at Vol State? Yeah. You yeah. could have had a class with him. could have had a class with him. And in his sentencing... Right. I always felt like he was in another place. <laughs> <laughs> in his sentencing, they uh, his defense asked, he shouldn't be sentenced to the full extent because he has a broken brain. That was the... Yeah. The, and they said, he's not mentally capable. And then the prosecution said, well, if that's true, how did he get straight A's at Vol State? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was their argument about I didn't even get straight A's at all. <laughs> I think I could, I think I have enough video that if I did something, they would be like, I could probably be like, his brain's broken. Yeah. Get like I have it. enough that they would, they could just go through this podcast and just be like, we could pull enough like horse divorce and they'd be like, 
come on. And the, I mean, the the judge would be like, I'm uncomfortable watching it. Like even he's like, just, just the tear share. I've already watched yeah, the tear share. Of, he's like, I've already I, watched the murder video. Yeah, but now yeah. the judge is like, I can't. Just, like, I can't. People right, are crying even, in the jury. Yeah, the family's like, just let him, let him go. I don't even, I don't think he should be in jail. I don't even think he should be. I don't even know if he knows what's going on. <laughs> Uh, a couple more in Phil Donahue's show in 1985 a bunch of people started fainting in the studio audience <laughs> one at a time they started collapsing and they thought something was going on on purpose turns out later they found out they faked it there were a group uh-huh. of people that all faked it and they were with an organization called Fight Against Idiotic Neurotic Television called Faint oh oh, oh. that's pretty smart yeah and so they go on TV and faint that's fun yeah, they thought there was like a gas in the room or yeah. it was overheated or whatever. Yeah. A couple of recent ones. Dakota Johnson calling out Ellen on her show. This was just a couple of years ago for not coming to her birthday party. Do you know oh, this? Oh, yeah. No. She called, Ellen says, why didn't I get invited? And she's like, actually, you were. Oh. And she won't let it go. And finally oh. holds Ellen and Ellen has to ask the producer. like, oh, I was out of town. Yeah. We don't have to watch it. But yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's no way we could watch it. And yeah. then the uh, Cash Me Outside Girl. Yeah. That was just a couple years ago with Dr. Phil. That girl got famous. Yeah, she yeah. became a, a rap star. She earned a 2018 Billboard Music Award nomination for Top Female Rap Artist, along with Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah. Bad yeah. Bunny. That's her name? Bad Bunny. Is she, like, good? Or it's like- she has... Whoever's producing her stuff is... She got, like, legit people behind her. Yeah. So it all sounds super legit. That's the thing. Like, nowadays, if it's like, that's the... That's the part that gets hard with like entertain is like you just like you're like just give me a little f- like these people behind the scenes are so good that they're like just give me a little fame mm-hmm. and I can if if like if 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 there's fame and like you like this person they can probably like, we can do whatever if do people like her or do people like you know if people are like yeah I don't mind this girl like I don't know there's something about her that you kind of like like because mm-hmm. I don't think that's something you can't you got to have something yeah like, there's got to yeah. be something that you makes you want to like this person. Uh, but we, now they're just so good that they're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like right. we're like, you like her? Yeah. Everybody kind of likes her. You kind of, you kind of can't turn away from her. So you're like, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can get everybody to do it. Yeah. You know, like, and you'd be like, you could do whatever you want to do. And then it gets, Brian, hmm? trying to get a rap career started. I mean, you probably could. Better chance of comedy. <laughs> and then <laughs> he'd be on his own out there. Yeah. Bad breakfast. Bad breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shows are at uh, from uh, seven to nine. A rap show, share up show, seven to nine a.m. Yeah, yeah. instead of like three a.m. or something, yeah. to take the stage. Seven yeah. to nine. Yeah, he's so you're so like uh, yours is like his is so late. They don't start. They start at seven a.m. and they go and they just angle it like that way. <laughs> Do you think 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is late? You ever done 7 a.m.? <laughs> and you're like, actually, no, that is crazy. That's way later. He goes, yeah, dude, that's the latest you could do. Yeah. And it's actually just working out because they're like, that's like, you know, he gets up at five. <laughs> he's got a couple hours to get his, you know, like your CPAP off. CPAP off. He kind of gets out of bed and goes and does a show. But like, yeah, like, but they, if you sell it as going like, you couldn't party till seven name. Maybe you're the weak one, <laughs> right, right, right? And then you're like, I, I saw him doing a his morning walk. You go know, like he goes. He just saw him like he's a Bonnaroo. Yeah, he makes a couple of laps around the the weights. The, in his yeah, hands. he's got the weights in his hand around the Bonnaroo, and I just see him in a tracksuit, the, the two and a half pounders. Yeah, yeah, and he just makes his little. He goes, "That's the same. That's bad breakfast." <laughs> that's saw him at the mall. That's, uh, yeah, he goes mall walking. <laughs> I think my mom. I think my mom went to. My mom remembers him. He was a. You were already at high school. He's like. I mean, he was out of high school. My mom was. Uh, oh, right. I think she's bad baby. Actually, not bad bunny. Uh, well, I'll get trash for that. that. I apologize. Yeah. Ooh, well, then I could be cares. bad bunny. Yeah, she could be bad bunny. All right, I do have a couple more. I keep you, Wendy Williams. You, you'll love her. Dua Lipa. She couldn't say her name, so she was called her Dula Peep. Yeah. And she kept saying, not trying to be funny, just can't say it uh-huh. to the point where now she's got like a, people call her Dula Peep. Oh, they changed the person's name. Well, she didn't change it, but yeah. officially, but she goes with it now because Wendy Williams just couldn't say it. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lawler slapping Andy Kaufman on yep. Letterman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, Jim Everett on Jim oh, Rome. Yep. I was, yeah. I yeah. was going to say that. Oh, yeah. That was. Uh, I remember that one. 
Yeah, do you know this? I do know this, and I'm curious your thoughts on it. As far as whether it's fake or not? No, as far as I remember watching, I was very young watching this clip. And can you explain what it is? Jim Everett and Jim Rome, and he yeah, keeps so calling Jim, him. Kid killing Chris Everett, who was a female tennis player. Yeah. Right. And basically saying you're soft because he was LA Rams quarterback. And yeah. I guess Jim Rome's probably in LA. And yeah. he tells him, you call me that one more time. You'll see what happens. And yeah. he does. And then he knocks the table over and shoves him down. Yeah. That's the that's the And it's good. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that as a young kid and and being like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. And then I, so my dad or my grandpa was like, no, he did. I mean, yeah, he Jim, had to. Don't call me Chris. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was just being disrespected to his yeah. face like this over yeah. and over again. He tells him, yeah, don't yeah. do that. Yeah. I think he called him that for years. Yeah. And he finally came on there head enough. <laughs> and then it's, a, yeah, then he. And uh, it's great. I used to listen to Jim Rome a bunch. Jim Rome was funny. I, like Jim Rome would always be, he would go on some rants and like Jim Rome would be very, very funny. Uh, I was always a big, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. She just started like oh, welling awesome. on him. Love it. Uh, but that's like somewhere you got to be like, yeah, dude, that's your fault. Like you wanted that. Like you called him that. You're doing it on purpose. He like, asked you to stop. You're like, I mean, he should have hit you probably. You should have. Yeah. He should have like, if he would have been just really lay you out and then be like, and then you could be like, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I have no worries. I don't feel bad about it. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's guys asking for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, just recently someone tweeted, what's one athlete do you most want to punch? And Jim Everett said, Jim Rome, and he's like, "Oh wait, you said athlete." So he's still, uh, oh yeah, not over it's it. still a thing between <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, we might be. A, yeah, he could be unless he's being funny. He could be funny. Uh, yeah, I could see. Yeah, yeah. Got a little mess here. All right, I know some worst talk shows. Uh, this is according to ratings, not my opinion. Pat Sajak show. I know Henry said that it was killing, but not according to my research. It didn't last very long. And the Pat Sajak show, he was. F- he uh, was a weatherman in Nashville, yeah. Channel 4. He took Dan Miller, the longtime anchor of Channel 4, as his sidekick to L.A. with him. Yeah. Oh. And just didn't work out. Dan Miller came back to Nashville and went back to anchoring the news. For what station? Channel, Channel 4, 4, WSMV. Oh, uh, okay. I thought, I thought this was another guy no, above you on no, the news no, Channel 5. No. Uh, the Chevy Chase Show Yeah. aired on Fox. I remember this. It lasted for five weeks. And then it was canceled. Yeah. They're all trying to go up against Carson, especially when Carson left, and they just couldn't do it. Magic Johnson had the magic hour. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. How long did that last? Uh, not very long. His sidekick was Craig Shoemaker. Yeah. Okay. Arsenio Hall, I think, show did really good, right? Arsenio did, yeah. yeah Arsenio was, was like a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. long was he on? I don't he have wasn't a on. He was on a, lo- a long time. Yeah. And then he made a comeback a few years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, but I don't think that went good. No. But the the Arsenio Hall show was like a big show. Yeah, I mean, when Bill Clinton played the saxophone on there, I think that oh, helped yeah. this presidential campaign. Yeah. So the, the first wave of it was 89 through 94. Yeah. And so then, it's not like it's crazy long. It was six seasons. Yeah. No. I would have thought longer. 19 yeah. years later, it, it was w- revamped for one season. Yeah. It's just not the same. Yeah, it's... it's re- It's, it's, you know, I think sometimes with all that stuff, like sometimes these things, shows need to feel more off the cuff in a weird way. And like, so when like Bill Clinton playing saxophone, like, or something like that, it's like, it feels like very different. You've seen something different. And I think now like stuff feels too, when you make something new, it feels too like cookie cutter or too like, here's the formula. Too scripted. Like Carson, like was... You, you don't know who's going to walk the door. You don't know uh-huh. who's going to sit there. You're going to go. You don't know what he's going to do. You're going to. It was like that was like the. It was like a hang. You felt like I'm hanging with the dudes, and it was like probably a, almost like a podcast for the first. Like Don Rickles coming by. Like all these guys come by. Like it had that kind of feel to it, yeah. and it didn't feel like here's this celebrity that I don't know anything about, and they sit down and they don't know. You know, it's like there's no like uh, sometimes there's a rapport in the fact that like it's like yeah, just have people on and like. Be and Arsenio would have had that feeling of just being like, you know, it's like a dude. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, the other thing I was gonna say, I don't know if I said it last time, uh, Fallon, I think, said my name right this time, Bargetzi. Oh, really? Oh, really? Was it the first time that you yeah, he remember? said, said the to be? We might talk about it next time because he's already said Bargazzi. Yeah, I don't think I, I didn't, I didn't say anything to him. I think someone, like either my publicist, someone said something uh-huh. and, uh, 
he said it to me later. I was like laughing. I was like, I'll go. And next time we go on, I was like, I'll just talk about you saying it that way. Because mm-hmm. like, I think we say it wrong as our family. <laughs> I think we're the ones that's wrong. Bargetzi. Yeah. I think Bargetzi is, I think we say it with an E and then we say it wrong. It should be Bargatzi. Yeah. But, uh, but I would, it was like funny to be like, that was the first, like, you know, I just was like, I never said, I don't even hear it. Yeah. Like, I just go, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Bargatzi or Bargetzi. I think if you're in that world, I'm like, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You turn yeah. around for sure. Turn around. I turn around. A couple more. Alan Thick from Growing Pains. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talk know. show. Okay. Thick of the Night. Didn't Big in Canada. Didn't work in the U.S. And John McEnroe, a show on CNBC from July to December of 2004. It twice garnered a Nielsen rating of 0.0. <laughs> And that's literally like, no one watched it. <laughs> is it literally zero people? Or no, somebody? it would be a really small amount. So that means like, I mean, just very, very small. Did not even register. I mean, that's a cool looking. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> being on a show and you're like, nobody, nobody's watching this. I think I did a, uh, I mean, you can tell that I do like a late night, or not a late night set, but I've done a, I've done a stand up set on something and you're just like, not one person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did one New England New England Sports Network N E S N New England yeah. Sports Network, and they aired a comedy thing. And I remember doing it. And I remember I never had a person go, "Hey, I saw that." Never one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I remember eventually someone saw it at it was on after a hockey game, like at a bar. <laughs> like so, it was like they showed it like that. But it's funny to be like audio off. Yeah, it's just funny to be yeah audio. Off. Like it's just crazy to be like you're like you go on TV and you're like no one zero is like yeah that's good. Do you remember when Hugh Grant was on Leno right after he yeah. got arrested? Yeah, I think that switched Leno to first place. Oh really? From, I think he and Letterman were back and forth. I think Letterman was. I've read this somewhere. That interview, everyone watched. Leno was funny, I guess. Yeah. And I've read that that kind of like was the beginning of him taking over first place. Well, it wow. probably humanized Hugh Grant. Yep. Like Leno's a much better uh, – if I was Hugh Grant, I'd rather go to Leno. Leno's going to be – he's going to handle – he'll be able to make you – that's what a comic should do. Is like I should be able to make you like be like, this person's a human. This person made a mistake. I'm not going to just like, you know, I, I don't want to feel like I'm the audience yelling at you. Mm-hmm. Everybody can make their own decision on how they want to interact with or react to this guy from here on out. It's not right what he did or whatever, you know, was. And so it's like, you got to be like, it's like where Letterman's the opposite of that, where Letterman's, it's more, you're, you do what it's supposed to do. I, you know, like, I don't think Letterman's, I think if you met Letterman, I, I better, I've never met him. And I, I bet I don't, I imagine it's probably not the best time. I can't imagine it being. Where I've talked to Leno and it's the best. Yeah. You could sit here and we could talk to Leno. We just talk comedy, be like, we're just hanging out with a buddy. And I think if you were around Letterman, unless you're maybe like three people, you would be like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> and like that's, and that shows, and that, but that goes a long way. And you got to be like, it's okay for that person to be, uh, you know, uh, jo- jo- Queen, Joe Queen Phoenix, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Like if that, if you're an actor and you're like that kind of, you're like, okay. Like you're you're this kind of guy that like you got to do so much weird stuff. Yeah. Or you're Jared Leto, and you're like, or Leto, like you're you're like, yeah, I don't know, dude. You have to be so weird characters. Like I understand you. <clears throat> maybe you wouldn't be the most. It'd be hard for you to be this because you're too good at this. Yeah. But if you're a talk show host, maybe you should be a little warm. <laughs> That's funny because Joaquin Phoenix had that. He had the big thing. The big thing with Letterman when he yeah. was doing a character. Yeah, I remember watching that. Yeah, because I just remember I remember watching it, just being like, "This is so weird." But I know people love Letterman and like comics love, and I I I I get the idea of like Letterman being funny, but like I don't know if it's the older I get, the more I just get like, "Hey, man, it's it's also like be a person and right. be like I don't know, just like there's an elitism that could feel you know Letterman's new show where he's interviewing all those people. It's like that feels like the most elite. Show. Where is it in Aspen or something? It's like somewhere in Colorado. <laughs> I only talk to the most famous people. I sit on stage and people watch us talk. Yeah. It's I, like you're, and I'm just saying it, it could be interesting, but you're like, that show sounded good all when it first like came out, but I don't know where it's at now. Like, cause you're just like, I don't know. So what? Y'all are amazing. Who cares? Life's great. Yeah. Here's all the things that are great. Here's two people that have, have no, 
ounce of like reality yep. in their life. Mm-hmm. And not even a, a sort of, <clears throat> they, don't, they wouldn't even know what to, if you had to go get something, they wouldn't even know. It would be, if they have to go to the grocery store, they go to, they live in a town that has a grocery store from the 50s. That's like, it seems like a movie set. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. the guy that runs it is a guy that that has a million dollars and he just does it because it's fun for him to right. do. It. Like they're they have no like there's no real life experience of so it's like some of that. I, that's always I take stuff is you take it where you're going like yeah dude and Leno does it. Leno's the guy that you're like that dude still does comedy and that guy has all these cars but you don't feel like he's bragging to you with his cars. It's like the guy's successful. It's not saying he's not successful, but if that guy could pull up to an auto zone. And talk to any of those guys right. for hours, right? And you wouldn't feel like you would. And he'd be like, "All right, I'll see." And you, would, and that that's that's awesome. That's a good thing. That's what you want. That's what you want. I don't think it's a bad thing for sure. All right. Uh, you want to stop? Yeah. Okay. Why do you have something? No, I mean I don't know if I can keep going. All right, let's stop. Uh, yeah, Alan Thick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John, John McEnroe. <laughs> John McEnroe, Alan Thick. I think it'd be fun being talk show host. I think. Is that something you'd want to do? I don't know. Maybe. You're essentially a talk I like show it. host. I kind of like it, but I would just be, I like I like doing it. I don't mind it. I don't think I would mind it as much as I thought I, I would. I used to be like, I don't know if I would. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would mind it now. I'd want to, I like the idea of trying to make someone, you get to be funny and then you got to try to make someone else be interesting and like build someone else up yeah yeah i think you would be uh good with kids i think i could do with kids but i think i could do with celebrities i mean some of that is when we were doing some people in here if we get celebrities in here mm-hmm. I, I like doing it here alive and i usually do my friends but i do like the idea if we get someone like if you have shay where you're like you want to be like yo i just want to show you that this dude's like a regular like yes. here's us being dudes and we're hanging out and like yeah. you could hang out with shay like we could all hang out together like it's like that's what you want to be like, yeah, we're all normal, and like, you know, it's like it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I like showing that. So like, if there if there's a sense of like where you got someone, you're like, if I would want, that's what I would want to show. So like, if you can't, I wouldn't want to interview someone that couldn't get out of that. Like, if you couldn't get out of that, I would be like, what are you doing? What are mm-hmm. we doing? Like, you don't, you're not normal. Yeah, you don't have like a normal. Be normal for a second. All right. You know, it's like I understand you, people have money, but it's like I would want. You know, how do you, how do you do that? All right. Uh, yeah. I don't think. So thanks. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> the end's on a, you know. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, this is longer than we thought. Yeah. Talk shows. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right. We'll see you uh, uh, next week. We love you, as always. Thank you for always being here. Uh, yep. Yeah, talk to you next week. Bye.